Electricity is the phenomenon where rubbing two different materials together, like a balloon and your hair, makes each item somewhat sticky. This effect was discovered around 2,500 years ago by a Greek guy who, for some reason, was rubbing a stick of amber with animal fur and noticed that it would leave a slight attraction to each object. If you've ever taken an introductory physics course, then you probably already know this. But for everyone else, electricity is a relatively obscure phenomenon. Right? No, of course not. While static electricity was the first property to be discovered, electric charge is a deeply fundamental property of the particles and fields in our universe. And here on Earth, it is utilized to serve the entire world's power needs, act as the logical fluid to drive the billions of electronic computational devices around the globe, and is an integral part to animals' nervous system and life in general. This makes electricity a great case study to illustrate the point that the context in which an idea is discovered can be very different from the reality of the idea itself. This is all I could think about when I talked with Lupe Fiasco, a Grammy award-winning philanthropist, storyteller, entrepreneur, artist, teacher, researcher, rapper. He is spending the upcoming year at MIT as an MLK visiting scholar to explore the academic frontier of rap, as well as teach a course on it in the spring. I was lucky enough to hear from Lupe about what his plans are for the next 10 months, and I felt a strong sense that, similar to electricity, rap's true nature is significantly deeper than its discovery point. In technical terms, Lupe has described rap as an intrinsically rapidly evolving, lossless data compression algorithm, built off metaphor, metonymy, and personification, all connected through cadence, and has established an educational guild called SOSA to formally teach linguistics, semiotics, computational and cognitive sciences, among others, to fellow rappers. Lupe talked with me about his purpose of being at MIT, his thoughts on the integration and interplay of rap and academia, and also entertained some of my random questions, like if it's possible to rap without using spoken language. As with much of his music, I feel as though there were many things Lupe discussed that I didn't completely understand, even after three hours, and I look forward to coming back to this conversation in the coming months and gaining an even deeper appreciation for Lupe's words. Probably a good place to start would be, you're at MIT, and could you just tell me what you're doing here? Um, hi, I'm Lupe Fiasco, uh, aka Waslu Jaco. That's my real name. Um, I am a visiting MLK visiting scholar and professor here at MIT for 2022-2023, teaching a class, doing research um, for the all of the tenure, and then teaching a class in the spring. And You've been here at, before, at MIT before, right? Yeah, so I was here in 2021 as an artist in residence. Um, and then prior to that, I was coming in and out like a ninja in the night, um, just speaking in different folks' classes, participating in different labs and stuff like that, mostly on the humanities um, and the computational poetics side um, of the buildings. But so, yeah, but I've been coming here in in various capacities for maybe like pre-COVID, maybe like five years or something like that. So a little, little nice chunk of time, yeah. you know, this will be my longest time here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you mentioned research in classes. Can you tell me what the research is about? Um, so I'm a rapper, right? And no, and nothing else. No, it's <laughs> that's it. That's it. But so for me, you know, I've reached a point in rap um, where you know, the actual craft of it, I have a certain mastery of, and even in some capacities, a grand mastery of. Um, and so for the past few years, for me, it's about investigating spaces where either rap isn't present at all, um, or in spaces where there's some type of connectivity, some type of relationship in some, in some capacity. Um, and in other spaces where it's kind of fully kind of fledged out so you have you have like professors and researchers and different folks using rap as the main focus of their work and they might come from a computational standpoint you know um and so you had those kind of three buckets and so for me it was like okay let me explore all of those like i already know how to rap so i know how to do that let me see what else i can do with rap outside of just rapping it you know um aside of putting words together is there something to how you put thoughts together? Is there something about you know you know rap as speech, speech as an extension of evolution? Is there something about rap being a special version of speech that maybe impacts evolution in a different way? 
right? And what does that look like? And then what does the research look like to do it? And then how valid is the research? So there's been like this, you know, kick for me to like get in spaces in whatever the space is that feels completely foreign to rap and then see how rap fits in there. You know, even if it's just, even if it boils down to like, there's nothing here that relates, but maybe you can write a rap about it, you know? So it's even, even in that, let me pick up some terminology, some concepts and kind of relate it back. So that's, it's been actually, it's actually been fruitful, you know? So part of that journey coming to MIT and different institutions, so I'll be at Caltech, you know, I'll be at Harvard, I'll be here just kind of like ducking around, seeing, talking to people. Um, you know, I'm here now. So this show is proof like, oh yeah, it's, there's stuff there. You know, there's stuff for you. There's stuff for you to do in a, in a long way, and maybe after this year, it'll probably be even more steps. You know, it's probably deep, deeper things. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the research piece. The class itself is about rap. So it's you know what is rap, um, how to do it, um, and here's all these other wild things that you probably didn't think about it as um, from a guy who's done it for you know 20 years. You know, half his entire life. Yeah. Kind of. So a couple of questions back to the research part. When you say how rap impacts evolution, mm. can you say more about that? So <laughs> thinking of, of it, so the, the title of the back up even a little more, um, started a institution called SOSA, Society of Spoken Art. Um, there's a member or two floating around MIT on the low. Um, actually, my, my hosting professor is, is, is a member of SOSA, um, Doc IT. So... Sosa was all about exploring, you know, is this question rappers know how to do it, um, but sometimes we don't know what we're doing. So Sosa meant to answer the what's um, cognitively um, from a poetic standpoint, from a computational standpoint, from a mathematical standpoint, uh, theoretical, e even even commercial and other aspects of it to, to really nail down the what we're doing. Um, and so, you know, Sosa has been around for like seven, eight years now, going on eight years, I think, maybe. And uh, we we explore everything. And it got to the point where it was like, okay, well, what are we going to explore this year? So we decided to kind of have these year-long conversations on a single subject. And so this year's conversation was evolution, you know. Um, and so the title of the conversation is Rap as an Evolutionary Force, right? Question mark parentheses question mark dot, dot, dot. <laughs> right um and so it was just like okay where do we start you know let's start with darwin you know um let's start with you know critics of darwin you know after that you know then let's just hit all these rabbit holes so we found ourselves like trading a lot of scientific papers white papers journal entries you know books all these this massive thing that has to do with evolution and finding the parallels you know um and then once we kind of had a somewhat of a decent understanding of some of the conversation and some of the state of the art, um, it became like, okay, well, where do, where do we fit in, you know, um, from a speech standpoint, looking at speech as an evolutionary development over time and different species and different places for different reasons. And it's kind of, well, okay, you know, humans kind of developed, you know, this language in a certain way for certain use cases and utilities. Um, we know rap like the back of our hand and then it becomes, well, is rap like imposing, is rap influencing um, genetic expression in any particular way? Sounds wild, right? But you read a ton of papers about metaphor and- um, So you mean literal biological evolution? Literal biological course. evolution, yeah. Got so it. not like- Not metaphor. Yeah. Not, not evolution like, of music. Yeah, yeah. Which, is, which isn't really metaphor because it is still like e uh, evolution. I don't think evolution, evolution, evolution that occurs in a synthet synthetic space is still evolution. Like sure. it's still, Absolutely. everything we do is, a, yeah. is an extension of the human, human condition. Mm -hmm. um, so- because beavers, the same way like beavers, dams are considered an extension of their phenotype to a degree. So, you know, um, anyway, but <laughs> but it's real evolution. And that was even one of the catches, right? What we were talking about, I was like, like, you know, and how to how to DJ turn this to, it's like, no, 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 no. We're not talking about cultural evolution. They have to think like, wait, maybe it is, maybe that still is valid as evolution. But it, it's bio, like biology, genes, gene expression. Um, and it lands less on the genotype side, there's less kind of evidence as of right now, right, for that, but the phenotype layer of it, right? Like 
how these genes are kind of expressing for new behaviors and stuff like that is super, super interesting, right? Um, it's weird because rap hasn't been around that long, so to speak, in the form that we know it as. Um, and there's there's not a lot of data. The, the data that's out there in the studies that we have, they may study rap particularly to get a sense of what improvisation looks like, right? And so they'll use rap freestyling as a certain kind of like, okay, let's start with that as an example for a study and see how freestyling affects or let's measure when people freestyle what's happening, you know, in certain sectors of the brain and stuff like that. Um, and so there's never been like a focused, focused study, at least to my knowledge as of right now, of, you know, looking at rappers across time, you know, like follow a, a, a group over, you know, five years, you know, um survey them properly control and do all that stuff so it's real kind of tangential at the moment but the hope is like the conversation that we're having um at the depth that we're having it will kind of inspire folks you know at institutions like mit to kind of really look at it and other institutions and look at it and be like oh yeah let's let's do that you know what do we need to fund that study and, and put it together and, and make sure that it's correct and blah, blah 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 so in regards to what you're talking about here what's the difference between rap and any other type of music um any other type of music well like could you do <laughs> yeah i mean like could you do these you said rap as it relates to evolution yeah would you expect that to be different than if you just studied some other genre of music as it relates to evolution um in certain certain parameters i think every I, the big thing is i think everything that we do affects our evolution right sometimes terminally Right. By just completely obliterating the species and then other places where, you know, um, <laughs> uh, behaviors kind of get framed and then reinforced and then locked um, through various influences of cultural inputs or whatever. So I think you'll I think you'll definitely find, you know, ish like things that have um, changed or responded to all kinds of music, you know, all kinds of music. I think what's interesting about rap is it's very heavily speech focused you know what's distinct about it is there's a lot of talking as you can see i've been talking a lot <laughs> right but there's there's a lot of talking it's a lot of verbosity in it um and a lot of kind of the the nature of it is this competition to be diverse so it's almost rna in its versus dna right where it's like it's constantly rep it's constantly mutating Right. Is that what you mean by diverse? Yeah. So the diversity. So it's constantly mutating. RNA, you just take RNA viruses, for example, they're constantly mutating versus yeah. DNA, which is very stable. Right. Um, they're just, it's a constant like pressure to, to, to not do the same thing twice. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're replicating, but it's replicating on a certain frame, but constantly ch like every time you come back is different. You know, you want, even me as an artist, I never want to do the same thing twice. Like, I don't want to rap in the same style. I don't want to use the same subject matter. I don't want to use the same beats. I don't want to use the same this. So there's a lot of diversity in it. Um, and so what what is all of that diversity that you're either listening to, yeah. right? Um, or, you know, creating, you know, how does that impact versus, you know, just jazz standards, right? right? Where um, you're playing the same jazz record, over and over and over and over again, right? Or with dance music, where it's the same BPM over and over and over and over again with the same kind of cliche moments and stuff like that. Cliche in a good sense, right? Um, so there are like, you know, there's there's big thick lines between musical genres, right? Um, and I think the one thing that rap is unique at having and being is just the level of, of verbosity in it like the level of vocabulary the level of kind of linguistic diversity that's that's embedded in it and so i think it has a closer tie um and and it has everything that comes along with just music you know and the impact of just music on cognition the impact of music in the human kind of condition so it has that going forward and all that that entails it's a more stripped down version of kind of musicality but it's, it's definitely there in terms of the beats but that linguistic aspect of it on top of that I think gives you like a double dose of kind of like potential for some type of, you know, evolutionary impact, you know? Yeah. Maybe. So just because you brought up this comparison between RNA and DNA, so I, I might be wrong because I'm more of a physicist still than a bio biologist, 
But I think the reason DNA is so stable is because it has like two strands, it has like a, a duplicate basically, and there's some error correcting code mm. algorithms that can run. And RNA is a single strand, so it doesn't have this. Do you know, now looking back at rap compared to other genres of music, why, what, like, what's the driving force for rap being so um, diverse? Um, I think that it's kind of like its foundations was competitive right yeah. and so when you're competing and then so there's two so it's a competitive and then there's a complementary aspect to it right so the competing aspect is you're an mc i'm an mc um we're gonna battle i am not an mc <laughs> i know <laughs> <laughs> we're your microphone controller right now right yeah. you're on this mic so right now you're mcs right um but I, I say that just as to set the example right yeah like we're we're gonna meet up in the park, yeah, and you know there's gonna be a, a potentially a circle called a cipher, and then you know there's gonna be like a little yeah, yeah, yeah. little beat going whatever beatbox, and then you're gonna kick a verse, I'm gonna kick a verse, yep. right? If I just kick the same verse you kicked, right? I am, and when I say kick a verse, you're gonna rap a rap, right? Yep. When I say rap a rap, you're gonna speak this kind of like <laughs> rhythmic, poetic, you know, uh, refrain and phrase. Um, if I kick the same thing you did, there's nothing special about that, right? I'm not going to win the competition, right? Maybe I could if I did it in a certain, with a certain like intention to repeat every line that you just said and then play with it and put different tonal pieces on it, right? Um, but if I just did that, I'm, I'm going to lose, yeah, right? So I have to kind of take in consideration what you said and then respond, right? Or if it's not more improvised like that, and it's more like I'm coming with a set of prepared, pre prepared kind of refrains. Then it becomes I can't just I, this. I got to kind of build it up, right? So I know this one is kind of weak, but I'm gonna start off with this one. This is gonna be my middle one, no, regardless of what you say, right? This is gonna be my middle one. You know, then I'm a I'm a depending on what he says. By the time we get to this third, you know, kind of back and forth, I got two options, and then. You know, here's my closer, right? right? Yeah. So those just by nature can't be the same, yeah. right? It, it, you can change the, the intonation, right, and the tone maybe on the same. Maybe like, oh, he said, and I've done this before, but I still change the pro the pronouns and prepositions to make it different, but use the same kind of bigger macro phrases, right? Um, but they they by nature they have to be different to be competitive, right? They can't be static, right? So there has to be some dynamism in it. And that dynamism is that comes from that competitive piece. The complementary side of it is more call and kind of call and response to a degree, right? Where it's like I'm gonna, and this is probably more evidence for it, for having both kind of like an RNA and then kind of like a DNA yeah. thing, a kind of a, a looseness and a lockness to it. Is like call and response is I'm gonna say something. And then I need the crowd to repeat it, right? I'm going to give a command and I need the crowd to respond, yeah. right? And it's kind of chasing that compliment, you know, huh. that becomes like, okay, we're going to, we're going to train a behavior right. and kind of create a groove. So it's right? like a like highly recursive network. Indeed, 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 yeah. right? Even the, the recursion aspect of it is, and it's, it's funny because you can, recursion is going to happen regardless, sure. right? Yeah. There's only so many words. The, and even though it's like it, there's infinite amounts, it's like there's infinite amounts of gibberish, right? But in terms of like a, a proper, respectable, semantical kind of frame, it, it's, it's somewhat limited. Um, and there's diversity within that kind of frame, but it's still a frame. And you can fall back on the recursive because you know it's always going to be there. And then you're free to be as loose as possible, right? Because you know you're always going to somebody somewhere is going to make sense. Right, it's going to have some type of semantic, like impact, yeah. right, or validity. So I think it plays to your question. I think it, I think it's plays in both, right? I think that the RNA is more expressed. I know we call it RNA, but I think that that capacity of constant diversity, constant permutation, um, is is more so in the playground. And I think one of the keys is because rap becomes locked in the in the technology space in terms of it, you have to record it, right? 
um, is going to be set in stone. You can't change it. It's, it's literally mastered. I mean, it's, it's locked in. We're done. You can't make any changes. And then this vinyl, this CD, this tape, whatever is going out, this f digital file is going out into the world. And it's not going to be able to change. And the rappers, and so that's like the DNA, right? Within that is, it's, it's kind of getting cellular, I guess. Um, uh, you, you have, the lines have to have, if you're really good, um, even if you're just good, it's really good, it's probably even too much of a bar for this. If you're good, then each one of those lines should have a different meaning or a different potential for meaning, right? And not in just kind of relying on recursion, but in an intentional way, right? Where it's like every line that I rap on this song that cannot be changed has different potential spinning in it. I'll call it spinning, right? So there's, it's this constant spin of semantics that this one line that I said has one layer of meaning sure. and then upon review another layer and then upon review another reveal and then then you that line is connected to another line that line changes when that changes it also changes the meaning for this and then so you have this constant kind of like spinning throughout the verse right and throughout the songs and then when you listen to it and knowing that you're we're emotional we change right throughout the day different spaces, different contexts. When you listen to it in this context, it's gonna have this meaning. And then when you listen to it in this context, it's gonna have that meaning. And then when you listen to it in this context, it's gonna have that meaning on a macro scale, right? I'm gonna work out to this, yeah. that same song that I worked out to, and I'm gonna cry to it because it, the, the one that makes me cry. And then this one, but I'll be so excited. And then I'm gonna have sex to this one this time. And then, then, I'm, then, I'm, then I'm gonna cry again on this one, you know? And it might be the same song, yeah. you know? So I think that's also that, kind of the RNA on a macro, yeah. RNA trying to behave like DNA, right? So I'm sure that you know that you're, I can't believe I'm saying this to you, but like, you know that you are known for like these insanely deep lyrics. I am? <laughs> God fucking damn it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm no, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just out here getting roasted. No, no, um, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm just. I'm, no, I, I'm, I, know, I'm, I know, I know. But um, no, but the real question though is like, because there's just so many people like, you know, dissecting all the stuff you do. And it's not clear to me if like, like how the hell do you plan for that? Like, how do you, because I can't imagine that you go into it and be like, all right, like, let me think of a line that is going to work for working out and have another meeting for sex and have another meaning for relaxing. Like, like how the hell do you do that? I, th I think we overthink who us, like us as human beings, that we're just these completely wild like completely unpredictable, right? Like devices or, or, or I don't know, um, compilations of meat and matter and flesh and blood, right? Running around and we just can do anything, right? And we really can't, right? Like if you really look at the range of what the human is capable of, even on its highest technical levels, I'm going to the moon. Right. And all of the stuff that re is required to get you there may be at, 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 at some scale. Oh, that's ex that's extremely complex. Yeah. Like he built they built this rocket and it has this thing. Right. And it's like it might be like, yo, the rocket was easy. You just get a bunch of shit that explodes. Right. And you put it in a tube and contain it. And then you, you there you go. Yeah. Right? right. What's really tricky may be the the guidance system, right? Which is super particular and needs to be super sensitive and stuff like that. But then the guidance system might only be valid to get you to, to low earth orbit, right? Then it may need another system might need to kick in, right? So even these kind of systems become obsolete at a certain, they're meant for a very specific thing, meaning that their range is very constrained, right? So even if you look at the most high tech kind of human device, its range is still somewhat limited, right? And they said, well, if you just unleash you know, you let a computer be a computer, like it still has a, it still has a, a, a range, even if, even if it's range, it's its power, right? Like eventually that battery is going to run out and then all that, you know, expansion is going to disappear, right? Yeah. So I'm just using that as an example, not to get off on a tangent, but that like even the things that we make that may be considered like, oh, super high tech, like, but look what we did. It's like, well, you're still just solving an A to B here to the moon. And it's like, don't minimize that. It's like, but that's 
that's, that's what it is. Like we're getting from here to the moon on a place that you can't survive, right? So it's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's like, okay, you go to a place that you can't survive in naturally and you got to take all this shit and it's going to crawl. It's like, okay, okay, I get it. Um, but we have, we, we're very limited in scope to a degree, right? Um, tons of potential, but still limited. You know, potential's not potential's not doing right. It's what you could be doing right. Um, and then when you look at how much of the human kind of world actually has the the capacity to do, it then it becomes even more limited, right? Point zero 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 one two three maybe uh, you know of uh, people who can actually do it. My my friend who who actually won the Limelson Prize here a few years ago, um, oh, I, I'm an advisor on one of his companies. Runs a company called The Source, makes makes, makes drinking it's a plug makes drinking panel makes solar makes solar panels that create drinking water. Go get you. Oh, this was uh, zero mass zero, zero mass, mass yeah, water, yeah, 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 yeah yeah zero mass yeah, water. Yeah, so Cody that. Friesen, right? Um, he was like, yo, he's like, yo, the ideas are easy. The engineering is where you know separates. The shit from the fan you know what i'm saying like it's like you can have all these ideas but if the engineering just like no 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 right and so it, it comes back to like okay we have we think that we're this big yeah. but engineering proves that we're actually this big right. and so that same frame gets mapped back to rap right where we think that we're gonna in, like have all of this. You need to account for all these different circumstances, but it's really just a few. You know, it's like the, the main drivers. You know, sex, money, drugs, violence. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, what else? Uh, hi, hi, hyperbole. You know, to speak to that, I'm bigger than I think I am, right? Um, and then there, there's there's other range, but you know the emotions, you know, which there's a few main ones and then some blends. But it's it's really like on on two hands I can count. That's ten songs. That's an album, right? You know, I'm done. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> rely on I rely on recursion to make sure that no matter what I say, it's gonna have a certain frame yeah. of like uh you know meaning to somebody somebody out there. And then my skill set fills in the gaps, right? right? So it's like this unconscious at one point understanding of the human condition because I'm just speaking from my own humanity and then it hooks. Then you like, what is that? Then you become conscious of what you're doing. So then you can sit down and put an album together very, very strategically, right? Um, you've mastered all the micros, right? So you know how to turn a phrase and, and, and travel the story and do all this other stuff and create punchlines and aha moments and blah. Um, and you learned that just by practicing it. So some of it's practice, some of it's like formal training. So back to this thing that we that maybe this is my my soapbox. To me, everything's formal. I don't believe there's any wildness, right? I believe we label things as wild that we don't understand, but everything can be understood, right? So, well, almost everything. But the majority of things can be understood, at least for, at depth, you know, at a at least an intermediate level, right? Definitely below the surface, right? Um, and so, all the training I did as a as a rapper was formal. You know, me studying this rapper to learn how to do this trick was formal, right? Me studying, you know, this rapper to learn how to use my voice like theirs. Right, was formal. Learning that slow flow, that fast flow, this flow was formal. It happened in the streets, you know. It happened in my bedroom, you know. It happened, you know, at school, battling folks. But it was that—that that was a formal training, just as formal as sitting down and reading a book on linguistic cognition, right? Where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that's the what, you know. So I learned how to do it, the the vocational over here. And then now I'm studying the what, and to me, they're, they're the same. Sorry, for hitting the mic. They're the same. You know, there's, there's no no wild kind of like. There's beautiful accidents, 
right? But there's also beautiful on purposes, right? There's also ugly accidents too, you know? Yeah. Where you're like, man, I, maybe I should really learn how to do that instead of just, you know, trying to magic it, you know? Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um, I mean, I have to ask since you kind of mentioned it, what are some things that you believe can't be understood? So you said everything can be understood yeah, yeah. almost. What what what's what's in that almost? I I always like to leave a little room. Yeah. Uh, my one of my mentors, uh, Tavis Smiley. I remember I was I went on the show and I was like, "Yo, I'm finna retire." And he was like, "He's like, don't say that publicly. Always give yourself a little room to come back. So never like even if you even if it's in you, yeah. don't tell other people that." Right, just so you can have a little bit of room yeah. to for the yeah yeah. I never left, you know, because <laughs> um, people start responding to that, right. you know. Right. So it's like, yeah, just it's like don't don't say that, don't don't, yeah. don't say that. Um, so I always leave myself a little room for error correction, right? Like yeah, like just a little uh, bit of. I was asked, that's exactly what we do. So we have these giant horrible oral exams here, and if you ever say like oh, yeah, like this always happens, immediately a professor was like does that always happen? And there's like some tiny little edge case that will fuck you. It's like, no, like there's like a four glue on diagram you can draw, I guess. Um, so I think that's great kind of technique. Um, so I think we're kind of getting into what you're talking about with your class. So you, you mentioned, you know, for, to you, it's all formal and maybe, maybe not to you, it's all formal. Maybe it really is all formal and you're just the one that noticed that. Um, but you're kind of here in, you know, about to teach a formal class. What, what's, is that class for rappers or for people who are explicitly not rappers or both? So to, to draw like a parallel, like Sosa is for rappers. Like you cannot become a member of Sosa unless you're a rapper, right? And at, at rapping at a certain level, right? Um, Cause Sosa doesn't teach you how to rap, right? Um, Sosa does, you know, rappers know how to do it, but they don't know what to do. So the, um, the assumption, over here is, you know, there's people who don't know how to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> but they may know what it is, which is the other, which is the tricky part. So it's kind of flipped, right? Yeah, right. Um, where people probably know exactly what it is, right? Probably like, yeah, I just took a cognitive, like a linguistic, cognitive linguistics course. I know exactly what you're talking about. And I took a poetics course and blah, 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 right? Yeah. So they might know exactly what it is, but they don't know how to do it. So it's a great opportunity to be like, okay, cool. I can show y'all how to do it, right? And then also, you know, refresh memories or this is the way rappers approach, um, you know, kind of like like Shannon's like law of entropy or whatever it is, whatever that's called. Right. This yeah, is how we theory. look at information theory. Right. Um, and this is how we would apply it and use it in our own in our own space. Right. Um, it may not be the same. It may not be for the same. It might. To me, it's all the same results. But, you know, just know we're thinking about that too, right? So when you learn how to do it, don't think it's just like, oh, I'm on the street corner spitting my raps and look at all the raps that I got in my head. Like, 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 hold on, homie. Like, we're still over here thinking about, you know, surprisal and, you know, how do we manage that, you know? Um, so the, the class is rap theory and practice. And so there's some rap theory kind of similar to what we were just kind of going through like this is just a particular point of view um and then there's a whole lot of practice you know so let's, let's whip out those mics you know here's these beats let's get to these raps you know what i'm saying right. and let these raps and let the theory inform the raps then look then let's let's error correct let's let the raps inform the theory you know let's 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 see if we can be consistent see if these things really work so for me as a as a teacher, um, I've taught karate, I've taught, you know, rap at Sosa, you know, what we 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 at Sosa we say rap is uh, rhetorical, anthropological, philosophical structures. So that's taught that version of rap. Um, for me it's a student student relationship. It's not a teacher student relationship. You know, shout to Paulo Ferrari and Pedagogy Depressed. It's I'm here to, as much to learn from you all as just as much as I'm here to introduce you to some things that you may not be aware of or reinforce some things that you were already aware of, right? 
So for me, it's less about command structure, top down, teach you, listen to what I say, right? There are moments where it's like, you do need to listen to what I say because I'm one of the best in the world and I do this for a living. So this isn't just some jackass up here. <laughs> like I do, like I'm leaving class to go perform and make some money, right? Um, and there's other moments where it's, what do you think? You know, and I'm going to steal your idea and make a whole, no. Um, <laughs> but it, it is that dynamic for me. It's, you know, there's things that I don't know. So there's things where as I'm putting my syllabus together now, it's that little string of like, mm, do I really understand that? Let me see. And then the goddamn attic opens. It's like, you had no idea what you're talking about. It's like, well, let me not take that out the syllabus, but now I need to sign these four papers, you know, to really drive it home for myself in the process of building it. So that when we get to that point in the class, I can speak to it or I can pull in the guy or gal who wrote that paper to really like break it down. So I'm not coming at, at it as a know-it-all in the full spectrum, um, but I do want it to be rich. I want it to be robust. I want people to get a value out of it and a, a vocational value out of it, as well as to expand their kind of pre-existing thoughts and ideas about the subjects that they're based in. And that can be applied over here. Right. And let's rise all bolts, you know? Yeah. So you envision um, anyone who's interested in rap taking this class, basically. Yeah. Even even people who aren't. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's, I'm, I'm constantly surveying, you know, so I'm constantly looking and taking notes. I want to see people who hate rap. Like, I hate this shit. <laughs> Come in and hate it all the way through. Right. And then continue to hate it on the way out, you know, and their final exam. And I'm going to give them a nice F. But, <laughs> but no, like I want all f shapes of interest, even disinterest, you know, to get a genuine response and then to see like, oh, how can I how can I turn that, you know? Yeah. So we're talking about this class. And when you and I had been talking and I actually saw you mention it in some of your Sosa stuff that you want rappers to maybe not be experts in it, but at least see coding. You want them to see mm -hmm. physics stuff. You want them to see maybe calculus stuff. Um, like, why is that something that rappers should see? Like, why why is that beneficial to them? Um, I mean, and this will get covered in the class. And there's there's already classes here that kind of speak to this. So there's a there's a music technology um, kind of class. That, that I think it might still be on the books, um, definitely on, on OpenCourseWare and some other spot on OpenCourseWare for sure. But it's like music and technology, right? And it's re recording, right? Music, no matter what it is, is a technological piece, right? It's a computational piece, right? Um, you know, language is a computation, you know? Um, it's a formula, right? It's what is it solving? Social equations, right? Solving for x all the time. That's languages, right? That's what math is, you know, you, you couldn't have math without language, right? You wouldn't be able to talk about it, right? Or even the symbol. The symbol yeah, math is a language. Yeah, it's, it's very much sure. so. And when you want to record it, then it becomes technology, right? So I think that technology, period, right? comes from recording, right? Putting something down into a memory and then trying to, you know, then the battle becomes preserving that memory or resolution issues or cryptography issues or whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's that. That's the, the nature of, te of tech to me, right? Um, you could, you could, you could we, we don't have to go down a rabbit hole or maybe we can, you know, you, you know architecture and, and, and other things. Which you can say, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe it isn't a language, but it is. Those those beams need to speak to each other. Those joints need to speak to each other, right? They need to communicate, right? They need to be in communication in their angles, right? Um, because if they don't, we're fucking. This building's gonna collapse, right? And so one of the core principles that we teach at, at Sosa is called uh, FUV. Um, this isn't the secret side of Sosa, right? There's some secrets in there, but this isn't, right? So our, ours is FUV, 
is fermitas utilitas venustas, which is pulled directly or indirectly from uh, uh, Louis Sullivan. Um, was it Louis Sullivan? I think it was Louis Sullivan. Yeah, I think it was Louis Sullivan. It was an architect, right? And he pulled it from, his, it was the basis for his form follows function, right? Um, fermitas utilitas venustas is what inspired form follows function, right? Um, form follows, fermitas utilitas venustas is Latin, of course. So it comes from, was the Romans, right? Um, but really came from the Greeks, right? And what, it, you know? And it's it's basically if you do something it has to be solid, it needs to be it has to have fermitas, it needs to be useful, it needs to have utilitas, and it needs to be beautiful. It means it needs to have venustas, right? So you get these three layers that need to kind of be in communication. So Sosa prides builds itself off of literally off of the language of architecture, right? Building things, building a verse. You know, we call it verse design in Sosa, like designing a verse. So it needs to have these fundamental kind of properties kind of attached to it, right? Um, and what do you use as a as an analog to proof your work? That building, right? So you're proofing your linguistic work off of this structure, this architectural structure, right? Um, that's how the your things need to be communicated communicated within each other. The angles of your verses need to be in a certain way and the curves need to look a certain way and they need to have a certain function and you know and so it's a shape, right? Shape of your verses. <clears throat> um so go back to the original question because I went down the hole. No, I, I was just asking about why it's um broadly why is it useful for rappers to learn about all this computation stuff? got it. Um so the recording process is a technological process. So at one point, it was just pencil to paper, right? And you just needed to know how to write, right? You need to be literate in that sense, or textual in that sense, I guess. Um, not literate works. Though. Then it became, OK, now recording is you know, in this, this microphone. Right. And orally, you were you were recording in other people's brains or you would memorize these things. Right. So you're doing a natural kind of recording, the technology of you. Right. Then we became a peripheral. Right. Or some type of prosthesis. Then it became like, OK, now you have to have a mastery of pencil, which is a technology. You know, even if it's a stick in the mud, it's interface. You know, these two things are interfacing. OK, technology. But. Fast forward, now it's like Pro Tools, right? right? On computers, you know, with all of this stuff and special, there's a guy there and he's the only guy that knows how to how to fix it or he's the only guy that knows how to use it. You just go in there and you rec you go to the mic, yeah. right? A mic that you don't even understand how it works, yeah. right? And he's like, don't touch it, you know, don't touch it, you know? <laughs> Or you go to a show and you're, you're like, let's perform and they give you the shittiest mics that they have in the building. Like they scratched up, dropped the whole thing. They give you the shittiest speakers that they have in the building, right? They're saving their special speakers, you know, for, I don't know, Wayne Newton to come and perform at the coffee shop. But it, anyway, they're giving you the, the shittiest monitors. Yeah. They're giving you their shittiest technology, right? As the rapper, because you're ignorant of how to handle this stuff. You don't know how this stuff works. That's the assumption that I'm making, right? Yeah. I don't believe that to be true, but I'm a, that's the assumption. The more you know about how these things work, just off that, even if you don't own it, just the more you know how it works, right, will give you a greater respect for it and respect not in a respect in a technical sense. Like, I know how to handle it. I know how to hold it. I know how to clean it. I know how to, you know, safely package it and travel with it. I know what to do if something goes wrong. I know what it is so I can troubleshoot. Right. And make the time easier for everyone around. So it's not like, you know, tell me what's wrong. Or you go to the doctor's office. Tell me what's wrong. Yeah. It's like my, my elbow yeah. feels gray. And they like, what? <laughs> right. So compared to knowing the anatomy. And yeah. Saying, like, like my uh, biceps femoris. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like I, I think I I think I ripped my bicep. Doc. <laughs> yeah. You think that's it? 
versus like, oh, my arm has a boo boo. Yeah. Know? <laughs> right. So yeah, we go from like my microphone has a boo boo yeah. to like I think the diaphragm in this is 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 off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or even as like I think this needs a new battery. Like my vocal pack needs a new battery. Mm-hmm. Right. Because it's clipping, and maybe having a new battery will solve that. Right. Um, and I just think it's to to have an awareness of that at least initial layer of the technology that we're interfacing with. Mm-hmm. That rap was born into, right? They're like the rap is we study it and we we do it. It was born like interfacing with technology, literally, right? In some cases, it was a I won't call it a perversion, but it was a a uh, a colonization of kind of technology and then reworking it and retooling it to express a purpose that it wasn't originally meant for right so taking what was meant to be the noise or the suboptimal use and then no that becomes the main use now right and like why is it suboptimal because it'll destroy the needle but it's like but i want to destroy the needle right so now i just need to get more needles Right, that's the song for that one. Right, um, it's gonna destroy the record. Right, like I I know. Right, so I need to get more records. Right, um, so there's a uh that same kind of call and response of like here's a tech, it's saying something. Okay, cool, it's calling to me in this way. Okay, I take it. Mm, I know you meant it to mean this, but RNA kicks back in. I'm gonna take it to me in this, yeah. and then I'm gonna spit it back to you, and it's gonna be DJ scratching. But now I need to I need to invent a, and this is real t- story. So Grandmaster Flash had to like invent it, the slip mat, right? Where it's like I need this 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 secondary layer between the vinyl and the recording kind of the 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 record kind of wheel, whatever you want to call it, that gear. I need something in there as a bushing yeah. to kind of just like. You know, make this slip on purpose, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I can have more kind of tactility, I guess, or whatever he's he needed it for. But he created this thing to slip at, yeah. right? Um, that's from him looking at this tech, understanding it at a deeper than fundamental level, and then being able to manipulate it to produce a new thing, which became the sound bed of of hip hop, right? right? Yeah. Um, and I think the more we know about that stuff, even in today's high tech stuff right um the more we'll be able to kind of expand um what what we do you know right we we came in riding on technology's back um let's let's keep riding it you know what i'm saying yeah. let's, let's keep let's get into it but let's let's know when that when the horse gets sick to, to extend the metaphor we know how to heal it yeah. you know or we know how to make it run faster yeah. you know we know how to take care of it and inspire it Right. Yeah. Understand the rules and then bend them. Indeed. Indeed. You know, so I'm, a, you know, we've talked about this a little bit before and I'm really interested in this basically interface between rap and the, you know, math, physics, that sort of thing, uh, coding. Um, what you described, I would say is kind of explicitly help. So like technology explicitly helping rap. So like, like you literally want to know, Okay, well, there's a diaphragm that's going to vibrate and that's going to send some electrical signals. Like, okay. Um, on the other side of things, so that's that's like hard sciences helping, uh, hard sciences helping rap explicitly. On the other side of things, I see rap helping physics or helping math or help, like really helping the people, um, but it's more kind of implicit. Like, I listen to you or I listen to like other songs. And it doesn't like, it's like, you're not telling me how to solve these equations, but it's something about like getting in the flow and like getting in, in like the vibe. Mm. And now it's like, oh, okay, like I'm thinking differently. And like now, so rap and music in general is really helpful to sciences, probably like everyone, but just for to be specific sciences in kind of an implicit way. Like you're not like, again, like your words aren't telling me what to code, but kind of being in that state that I'm not able to get to by myself is like, okay, like, now I'm kind of feeling it. And I'm wondering if there is, if there's a useful reverse relationship where understanding Newton's laws would be helpful to rap 
in the same kind of implicit way. Like you understand, you having an idea of like what's going on with inertia and momentum or understanding, you know, calculus and infinitesimal spaces. If there's any room for that to be helpful implicitly to rap. I mean, I think it's room for it to, to, for it to help explicitly, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. let alone implicitly. I think you can't, you can't escape things affecting you and influencing you somewhat implicitly. Right. Yeah. Um, the, 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 uh, again, this kind of, uh, the gift that is recursion, right? Um, I th I do think that there's, even if it's just as direct as I'm going to take Newton's laws and I'm going to rap about them, right? Um, or I'm going to take uh, the nature of uh, uh, crystal epitaxy, right? Or I'm going to take the, the, you know, uh, I don't know, some other highfalutin kind of physics I jargon. I that word from you, by the right? way. Epitaxy? Yeah. It's a, uh, no, falutin. Falutin? Yeah. Oh, well, I wish it was epitaxy, but it was falutin. Whatever. Um, <laughs> I, to be fair, I don't know what that is. I was just too nervous to ask you. Falutin? No, no, no. I know what falutin is. I looked it up when I heard you say it. <laughs> I don't know what crystal epitaxy is. I was going to look that up later. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's they they uh they grow they start with a substrate and then they they grow a silicate on top for it's basically for a semiconductor oh, kind for of silicon wafer things yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so wow. it's, it's kind of a, a version of that right um, versus kind of uh, maybe they still print on it maybe they still do the kind of lithography I don't know for the silicon wafers yeah 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 I'm not I'm not sure I exactly know. I know when they're etching they do some sort of diffusion stuff yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I seen it here. I learned, I learned that word here. So exact, so exactly. Walking through the halls at MIT, there's some conference on like, like epitaxy. I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and immediately stopped, was like, no, don't just pass that by. Let's figure out what that is. And then watched a couple like YouTube videos on it. I was like, oh, wow. I didn't know. No, that's, yeah. that's what they say. And it's true. Like more than half the stuff I've learned here is just from walking around and being like, mm, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Look it up. Like, oh, cool. But there, it's like endless. Like, obviously, like, I, I never fucking heard that before. <laughs> like, I don't know. Jeez. So we're, pa we're passing it along. Um, I think even at that scale, yeah. right, clumsily, I, I, would, I, I would call it vulgar, right? Just big, unapologetic, ah, <laughs> I'm going to make a rap. You know, about gluons. And that's just what it, the fuck is going to be, right? I think that even if it's that explicitly, to be aware of the terminology. Because at the end of the day, that's what rap is. You know, it's terminologies, right? Um, that becomes some kind of vector of, of influence and change, right? It, that becomes some type of, you know like meaningful if it's done at kind of the highest levels of rap right and i think sometimes what you get is folks in a discipline this isn't shade because it's um, and i'm going to give you the, the reverse folks in a certain discipline they have a certain mastery of or if not of even a master a journeymanship or journeywomanship level of 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 a uh, grasp they'll want to express in another field for the sake of play or for the sake of some type of novelty but they're not masters in another field they're not journeymen in another field they're 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 not even apprentices cuz they're not training in it they're amateurs right in it which is fine so the product that you get is very clumsy right so somebody makes somebody's in uh what do we call it? Somebody's in, I don't know, give me a field. Nuclear physics. No, give me another one. Somebody's in biochemistry, right? And they're like, I'm going to go rap about biochemistry, right? And they'll go find the easiest version of rap to do yeah. or the most, I want to say cliche, but the most kind of like mainstream version, yeah. right? And then they'll try and map that into that. And it'll sound 
wildly whack right horrible right yeah all like all, like all th- it just sounds like like a second grade like elementary school rapper just like oh this is fucking horrible <laughs> and i was talking to lloyd about it and i'm just like yeah dude like you're not no one's fucking bumping these songs when they're going to the gym like no you listen to them because your teacher makes you and that's it yeah yeah i know exactly what you're talking about so it it needs to be if this is the highest dimension of this craft this science theoretical or hard whatever then in order to migrate it over to this other dimension it needs to be communicating with the highest level of this dimension because the highest level of of this dimension is able to like have the capacity to 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 stabilize it right to make it you know to to keep the consistency right of what's required to communicate it right and there's some about operating on these different, these similar dimensions. And why why are they similar? Is because they're they're able to 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 maintain all of that 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 pressure and force and and you know. And when I say pressure, I mean like like a uh, intellectual pressure, right? The kind of intelligence quotients and stuff like that. But if it's this mismatch, it's gonna sound mismatched, right? And where's that mismatch taking place? Because you're a master in one field and an amateur in another, right? Yeah. So masters need to speak with masters. Right. The the flip side, the inversion of that, you know, and this is shade. This is shade. Take it as shade. This is shade. This is what shade feels like. <laughs> the flip side of that is me as a master of this craft trying at, at an amateur, right, in biochemistry. Right. So when I because there's this mismatch. I'm low hanging fruit. I'm just, I might just tell the story of the biochemist, right? And at the end of the day, the service that it provides to biochemistry in a real sense really just becomes very superficial, right? And there's, it's like, I don't, you, like, I came to listen to this record as a biochemist to like, oh, he's building on a theory that I had, right? And he's using the the heuristics and kind of like some of those the micros of of rap and what it's really really good at doing linguistically, and he's he might solve this fucking problem set with this right, but instead it just becomes an autobiography of a biochemist, and there's like, oh that makes me feel good it, it it makes the you know it's it's inspiration it's not didactic right right. So does everything need to be didactic? No, you know, but everything is didactic, right? It's just teaching you at a certain level, but you can't escape, you can't escape it. Like it's going to teach something, right? I would prefer that it teaches, like if you're going to do a rap about, if I did a rap about biochemistry, I want to be a master at biochemistry. Right, and then I want to have a a depth and understanding of it that when I rap about it, it is a white paper. You know what I'm saying? Like, is is not just an autobiography of, or to bring it back to Newton, it's not just an autobiography of Newton, right? It is breaking down whatever capacity, whichever one his 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 lenses, the work he did on on lenses and, and glass and stuff like that, right? I want to know that deeply. I want to know about refraction. I want to know about all these principles of, of light, and et cetera. Then I want to write a rap about it, right? And in some cases, because, because, because you know, master rappers are great at details and are great researchers, you could sit a master rapper in a room and give him a book on Newton, him or her, or them or they, in a room and... They'll come out with some, maybe not the whole thing, but they'll they'll give you a rap that will solve a problem set, right? You give them enough time, you give them enough, you know, you give them a goal, they'll they'll figure that shit out, you know. And I think the inverse could potentially be true for a biochemist. You give a biochemist enough uh, the proper time goal. And here's the here's the functions. And I need you to approach these functions 
the same way that you approach those proteins, right? And I need you to look at these nouns and these 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 micros, the same way that you look at those, you know, kind of picozoa and whatever. I think they pull it off. I think I I don't know if it like I would I'd be much more confident in my ability to teach you deep things about physics than my ability to learn enough to get by on rapping. Like it, it seems it seems like it would be easier for rappers to learn the hard science than for the hard scientists to learn how to rap and not be a total fool. Well that's because or is that just me? No, no, no. It's way? it's 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 revealing the elephant in the room is that the hard scientists have been formally trained, formally institutionalized and built in a certain way where they were meant to be learned. All these all these highfalutin um fields aren't not meant to be learned. Right? They're not secret societies. Right, they they want you. MIT wants you to learn nuclear physics, you know, and computer science, right, and epitaxy. Like they want you to learn these things. They're not like trying to trip you up or trick you or this, you know. And so they've created a path and some incentives for people to be completely devote devote their entire lives to teaching the macros and the micros of that field, right, till its completion. Is is there is there still some is is the amount of stuff more to be learned very very tiny yes right there's there's we're they're hit people are hitting limits of their fields right and either they're waiting on another field to produce that material so they can then leap up to another thing or they're waiting for like you know um, uh, what is the superconductors and you know there's other things kind of before they can move on to the next thing. And so now it's just kind of like everybody just just chill out. I'm just gonna learn all the shit, and then you know, good to knock on the door in maybe ten years, and like we we figured out superconductivity. Let's go at scale. Let's rock. Yeah. And it's like everybody's like, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> right? Rap is a little bit different. Rap has never had institutional training. It's never had vocational training in a formal way in an institution, right? With certain um, rap, there's no pensions in rap. There's no retirement plans. There's no tenure. There's none of that shit, right? It's built, it was built upon like when you lose, you lose all the way, goddammit. There is no second chances, right? Like you're finished, yeah. right? And the recording industry, same way, like there's no, they don't like when you look at a recording contract, there's no pension language in that shit, you know, no insurance. Like there's none of that shit in there. It's like you either make it or you die, right? Um, and some people die with no jokes, right? Um, and there's no beneficiary plans or nothing like that. There's a posthumous album, maybe, but you know. And the the other the, the it's a complete inverse. There's so much potential, right? Like it's so much unexplored. You know, I have a a, a protege of mine. She has a line in one of her records uh, where she says. Uh, uh, I could t I could talk about my pussy, but there's so much territory in female rap that hasn't been charted before, right? Yeah. So there's all these frontiers, right? Just in her particular dimension, right? In her particular space, right? Of like, yo, it's un we got so much uncharted territory, right? Whereas you compare that to biochemistry, it's like ah, we're kind of kind of running out of yeah, you know, things to cut up and dissect over here. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can learn, put maybe put in, you know whatever, but so the case being sorry for rambling, but the case the, the case is that you know rap has never had yeah. that formal institutional training with all of the things that you need at different steps to keep it and maintain it and keep it progressing. What has been keeping rap alive to a certain degree is money, superficial things. I mean, we still need grants, just like you all need grants. We just call them record deals, right? Um, to pay for studio time, whereas you need to pay them for lab time and stuff like that. Um, because I think we oper we were able to be more mobile and more portal more por more portable. And fortunately, the 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 technology that we need to do what we need to do is very low cost. It's very easy, you know. Versus you all 
which is like, I need a new scanning electron microscope and it's going to cost me a billion dollars. And can you please, you know? Um, and then when you need a new, like, a uh, needle head or whatever that is called in electron scope, like, that shit ain't like $5. <laughs> You you can't be in there just doing turntable moves on that shit, right? Like, so I I think it's the parallels are very interesting, yeah. right? And I, but I think they if if you can get the right person, maybe it's not me, maybe it's I'm the test for it to find out how you can merge those things and find the complementary slots. Um, then I think it, that's the learn that's the learning piece. That's the float all boats piece. Right. I think that's like one of the goals for me being here, you know, is like I kind of have that intuition and also have the hard skills and y'all got the intuition and some of the hard skills and we can see the gaps in each other's spaces. And maybe there's a way to sync these things where some of the potent this this surplus of potential that we have can get married over to you. Right. And then some of that institutionalization can get married over to us with the institutionalization with the goal to be having a rap degree in physics from mit yes yes okay could you talk about that a bit so I've, i don't want to put him on blast so i'm not going to say it but there there's the next step for rap as a whole in a macro sense is like what's left for us to do yeah. entrepreneurially i mean we're we're highly successful right um so that's kind of solid. We don't need your business school. You right? mean like making money? Get like yeah, making making money, building companies, entrepreneurially, even in a conceptual, in a on a making rap basis. Like each rap is a business. You know, literally each song that you put on an album is a business. Literally, it's a business, right? There's partners, there's contracts. You know, there's IP, there's everything that's in a startup is there. So each album is ten startups or 12 startups, right? Yeah. And we're successfully managing and launching these things, right? Um, and, you know, so the next step for me, or from what I've noticed the past few years, has always been academia, right? And so you'll see like rappers of note, um, and I'm talking about rappers, so I'm not talking about like, you know, anthropologists or people who went to, who went to school for music or, you know, they they went the academic route of music, so they got their masters and their PhD, and they came back and they taught a music class, right? And maybe they were a concert pianist, maybe they weren't, right? Maybe they're just a music theorist, whatever. They like to play in a band, but they never entered the industry in any kind of significant way. Yeah. No shade, but really, right? Yeah. Um, versus like, oh, Jay Z's teaching a class on rap at you know at at fucking Princeton, yeah. right? That's way different than like Professor XXX, who you never heard of. Yeah. You look at his CV and it's like, he's teaching a hip hop class at what? You know? It, fe it feels different. It feels different when Einstein is teaching a class on nuclear physics. Exactly. You're like, oh shit, Einstein is teaching, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So now you got the Einsteins moving into academia. You know, the Einsteins of rap moving into academia. And I think that that is maybe, again, we have all this potential and maybe in that cloud of potentiality, academia sits in there and we're achieving it now, you know? So there's rappers coming in as fellows in different schools. So my friend uh, D1 is going to be a Nas fellow at Harvard this year. Um, and they've, the, and again, this, the Nas fellowship has been around for years. Um, but it's always been academics or folks who are professors or scholars working within rap, maybe at a social level or anthropological level, but not necessarily performers of note, right? Um, whereas now you got performers of note coming into these spaces. Um, there's a, there's and there's 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 guys and gals kind of sprinkling all over the place. They're just kind of like, oh, you're teaching that. Oh wow! I didn't know you were teaching at such and such university. Like, yeah, I got a class. You know, this little little thing there. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. then somebody else is the. Then I'm I'm here at, at MIT in the, in the MLK uh, fellowship, and so it's just kind of like, this is the move, right? This is yeah. the next. 
you know, and there's folks building whole schools of rap, you know, outside of any traditional academic academic spaces, still partnering in some capacities. Um, the work that's being done at Sosa is like in, of its own. Like it's, it's, I'm next next few years. I'm looking for a campus, you know, oh, wow. not for a campus to be invited to, like a, a bare field that we're gonna there. build a castle on, yeah. you know, and that's we're gonna be, you know, Sosa's gonna be MIT uh, of rap. You know, in a real way. So I think that's happening. I think it's part of the arc of the the, the macro of rap as a whole, uh, moving from the parks to the industry and getting getting really fucked over, then learning, becoming a teenager, becoming a, a, a young entrepreneur, becoming a, a wizened business person, then moving into its academic phase, right? And then beyond that, you know, maybe it's its philanthropic phase. I don't know. Maybe it's it solves the world's problems in a serious way. Damn, there's just a lot of things to ask you. Um, okay, I'll just run through whatever I can think of first. One of them is, so there's Berkeley College of Music down the street, kind mm. of um, much different place than MIT, but obviously like, you know, musically focused. Why, why is it important that you're here at MIT or at Harvard instead of at a place that's traditionally more music bound? I've, I've been to Berkeley. I think once, maybe. I have some friends who I have a friend who, who went through Berkeley. And Berkeley has a Berkeley has a, a strong hip hop um core and tradition there. Um I actually think Curtis Blow uh is a fellow there in some capacity, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to misspeak, apologize if, if I have. Um but it's there. It's a reference point. It has a core. Um I'm sure they got hip hop classes there. You know, most most conservatories of note have a hip hop piece. Um, even even MIT has has some has a hip hop piece, right? And then other kind of ancillary things. Um, for me, it's not about music for the sake of music, right? For me, it's about musics or rap for the sake of it's not rap for the sake of rap. It's rap for the sake of what it can do next, right? Outside of its comfort zone, right? So you can go you go to Berkeley and you become very you can be very comfortable, right? Because you know you're going to be rapping, right? And you're not going to be you're not going to get hit with a math equation, right? And have to express what you're doing mathematically, right? Or you're not going to get hit with you know. Why is the, uh, what's the cognitive model? Maybe, but maybe maybe you will get hit with like, what's the cognitive model? What's happening? I'm sure there's musical cognition and stuff like that there. Um, but I think just from a reputational standpoint, like they do music. And my team's not known for music. You know, so somewhat of a challenge even to like this uncharted territory was like I could I could go to Berkeley and teach a class on rap. Yeah. Or I could go to Caltech and teach a class on rap. Which one you want to do? Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, fuck, I want to lose big. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want to lose very, very big. I want to I want I want to fall from the highest heights. Wow. You know, I don't want to fall from the first floor. I want to fall from the 19th floor unapologetically doing backflips the whole way down into it yeah. on, a, on a failure scale. And if we, if it wins, I want to win big, yeah. you know, I want to win at the highest, right. you know, I want the class to be of, of Nobel prize caliber kind of pieces in a real way. You know, I don't want another Grammy, you know, I don't want another billboard music award. I want rap to have a Nobel prize. You know, yeah. and where are they cooking the Nobel prizes? You know, I walk through the humanities, my humanities department where I'm stationed, and every day there's nine Nobel prize winners on the wall. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like the Grammy was the application to get in, right? To leave successfully, we need a Nobel prize. Yeah, you're talking down like it's like the economic people or whatever. Yeah, yeah I walk yeah. past it all the time to the piano room. Yeah, you know, it's like, all right, this is cool. <laughs> Um, could you talk about the differences? So, like from my perspective, 
these th these things. So rap and kind of your math. So you go like rap, then like math and physics, that sort of stuff. Both are really complex. I understand this stuff reasonably well. I don't feel like I understand rap very well, but I enjoy it. Like it's something you like you listen to and you feel it, but I don't understand what like why is that happening. Mm. But there's you know just a lot of complexity in both areas, and. The question is, how similar do you think that these are at kind of a technical level? Um, I mean, it's just, it's, I look at, it's, it's very, I keep things very simple. It's just, it's just macros and micros, right? And then ec managing expectation. And then, you know, so there's three frames. There's, the creation of the work or the problem set. Then there's the managing expectations, right? Which is kind of in with the creation kind of overlap because you're creating based on solving for X. You're making decisions, right? But you don't know what those decisions, how they're going to play out until you put it into the world. And then you're, you're at launch, and then people are interpreting. And then there's a cycle, because now you're gonna survey what they've been interpreting, and you're gonna feed that back into your creative pool. And you're gonna create work, and then you're gonna make decisions on that work, launch that work. They're gonna consume that work, and it's gonna come out. In that it's just compo it's it's just components. Like here's the basic components. What can you do with them? Right? For all of kind of high tech, it's here's some electricity. What can you do with it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like here it is. Here's different ways you can get to it. Right? right? Here's the different ways to produce it, yeah. right? But okay, what's what's most important? What you do with it? Right. I mean, clouds produce electricity, right? They, you know, yeah. like we're done here. If it was just that, yeah. you know, yeah. and you ain't gotta do nothing. But can you produce it on demand? Then it becomes a problem set. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. It's like okay, yeah, we can produce it on demand. It's like oh wait, we got we got all this. Look at this, all this like comes at a cost. Yeah. So you got to manage kind of the cost. Okay, cool. On the back end, but then it becomes it really becomes like, well, what the fuck are you gonna do with it? Yeah. That's when it becomes of interest, right? Generation is one thing, and that's that's cool, but it's pretty much you can almost automate that now. And in some cases, it is right. It's like maybe four or five people walking around this power plant at any given time, true. Yeah. and they're just doing like, can we write down that the dial today was this, you know? But the work is this like, I'm spinning, I'm spinning, I'm going, I'm going, I'm, I'm yes, this machine. Um, but then it becomes well, down the line, literally down the power line, what are you doing with it? How are you using it? So you got this big macro electricity, what are you doing with it? Rap, this is a big macro language right. of all the languages, languages as a whole. What are you doing with it? Mm -hmm. Right, what can you make it do? Right, and then let's get real particular. Okay, I built this circuit. It's able to take it in like this, but first it went through this converter and it converts it, it, it you know, steps it down to a usable voltage. Yeah. And then let's, then I got this circuit that makes it do this, that rearrange, that ranges this way, right? And that's, that circuit to me is basically just like a, a style, yeah. right? Huh. So you got this style and then here's my style, right? Here's some East Coast boom bap. And I'm going to take language, and I'm going to run it through East Coast Boom Bap, mm -hmm. and this is what that's that's what that circuit's going to make it do. Yeah. Here's some resistors and some capacitors and some other components. Da, da da da. And so it's it's the more components that you have, right, and the more kind of materials that you have, the more you can do with right. the electricity. Yeah. Right. The more styles that you have, right, and the more. Um, uh, it's really, it's really just the more words that you have, yeah. the literally the amount of different words that you have, 
the more you can do, the more the deeper stories you can tell, right? The more the more detailed story you can tell, right? The more you can that that thing that that unknown of of you, like it does something to me. I don't know what it is. The more that I can make it do other things that you don't make you do other things that you don't know what to do, right? Because it's literally making you do something, yeah, right? Absolutely. It's it's making you feel a thing, yeah. right? A, a nice well-defined kind of circuit will make you do all kinds of shit. Yeah. It'll make you die in certain cases, right? Oh, right? Yeah. In other cases, it'll make you feel really good. It'll make you... It, 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 it's meant to impact the human condition. That's where they align. All of, everything that we do is meant for who? For us. Yeah. For humans. Right? right? And is there other, other thing meant for other entities? Yeah, it's like, no, that's for trees, right? And then this is for fish, and then this is for this, and this is for that. But they good, right? To a degree, as long as we don't fuck them up, right? <laughs> like they, they can manage on their own, yeah. right? Um, but I think the majority of it is for us, right? Yeah. Even if it's for us to know that we're doing something to help the fish, it gives us greater powers to help, whatever that technology is, right? Using electricity to help fish. Right, it it, but for for our own benefit, why we want to help the fish? Because we want them to die. Why? Because of all the fish that we ain't got nothing to eat. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, if these trees die, we ain't we ain't got no oxygen. You know, we're dead. Right. So even in the grandest of you know altruistic goals, it still comes. It still feeds back feeds back to us. Yeah. Right. And I think something about that feedback cycle is what we share. Right. And that. We just at the on the end of language. We because it's language, it's different from electricity, but it still needs to run through the same process. It still needs circuits. It still needs step down converters. It needs these other kind of components. The same way that we just don't call them that, right? Um, we may call it dumbing it down. You know what I'm saying? Like we need a dumbed down converter, right? Because <laughs> this word is way too big and nobody's going to understand that. It's too much. Yeah. So is there a word that expresses that same idea? And because I don't have that much time, right? I got three minutes. This word is going to take up by itself. It's going to take up a second and a half. And it's very, 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 very focused. Too focused. It's over-focused. I need something that's a little bit more vague, shorter, compact, more power. I need that. So even we are on Moore's law, a subject to it, right? Yeah. So we need to get that transistor, trans small, 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 to the word that has the maximum impact with the most meaning. Right. And then I need to pop that into my circuit. And now three times the work for half the price. Along this idea of electricity or analogy to electricity, um, a lot of the stuff that we work with, you have some fundamental laws, like there's the fundamental laws of thermodynamics, um, electricity, like all you really have, you have a power source and then there's four things. There's a resistor, capacitor, inductor, and a mem, it's called a memsistor. Mem memsistor? Memsistors, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Don't forget the wires. Wires are important. I mean, you could just say like, <laughs> like wires are just resistors with like yeah, yeah. no resistance. But anyway, so you have these four things, you know, whatever, fundamental laws of thermodynamics. Are there equivalent things? Like, are there like fundamental laws for rap? Like, do you have like a set of like, you know, could you list, like, is there like a, you know, handheld number of things that is the foundation for all the stuff you do? Or does it not really work that way? No, it does. I mean, there's beyond just electricity. So stepping outside, we got electricity, which is there, and here's these other components underneath it, right? That we use to harness it, right? So you got language and what do we use to harness language, right? Yeah. And so it'll be like, oh, we got metaphor off top, king, king metaphor, right? Um... Which, which, it's a micro macro. It serves both because you get you you have under metaphor you have all these other branches of things. So you have like simile, right? Which is a used a lot in meta in, in rap, right? Um, this kind of this micro function of of metaphor. You got metonymy, right? You got personification. Um, you got. trying to think of things that are like maybe direct parallels you got cadence 
which is which may feel like cadence maybe the wires so the, the directions like where is it going so it's like these these flows cadence is like how i'm saying it which to me mimics how the electricity is getting to this and moving across this 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 interface or whatever um so yeah they're there they're there like they i could i could give you that's why i say i could give you like four or five things if a biochemist had these four or five things and then was looking at all of the other kind of branches that branch out of those four or five main ideas and get into the micros you could given enough time and practice the way of ma whatever master you have in biochemistry, you can have somewhat of the same kind of mastery, right? Yeah. Just by embracing those principles, right? Those kind of fundamental components. So yeah, they're there. I think you should get resistors, capacitors, meme misters, and you know, yeah. Why do you know what a meme resistor is? I'm silly, man. Dude, it's like, I, like I'll just throw random shit at you and you're like, oh yeah. I'm like, man, Here's like the difference. I'm aware of it. Could I point? Could I pick one out if you put them shits in front of me in a box? Like no way, I wouldn't be able to point out to me, Mister. Right? Um, but you know, I took I took like I took electronics in in high school. You know, um, so I got a little bit of a. I kind of know what that does a little bit. I kind of need to know what I'm talking about a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, but I don't have. I can build one for you. Like yeah. no fucking way. They they used to be those in particular used to be like purely theoretical until like. A few years ago, when someone yeah. built the first one, but, but um, I forgot. I think I read. I didn't read the paper. But what is it called? Anyway, anyway, yeah. I watched Computer File. Oh, dude, that's so, and yeah, Number that's awesome. so yeah. There you go. That, that's I know what I mean, Mister. Is because I watched Computer File, and the guy was working on scan, scan electron microscope, and he mentioned me, Mister, and I was like, Oh, what's that? Yeah, maybe, maybe this is something I could put at the beginning of that, you know, minute whiteboard thing that I was telling you about. Because it seems like kind of what you do is you, th there's like language, which is similar to electricity. And then you use your fundamental tools to kind of craft the story you want to get across into this. You kind of funnel it down through into this meaningful three minute rhythmic message. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think at all about the difference between rap and other forms of information transfer? Like, like rap feels like a really efficient and emotional system of information transfer. Oh yeah, to me, it's it's a uh, it's data compression, right? And it if it, it fundamentally observes and expresses all of the rules of 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 data compression, right? Of I said, what was it, was it lossless? It's in my notes. I got a ton of notes. But it's like it's like lossless, yeah, like lossless data compression, right? Um, and so that's why all the once once you look at it like that, if you can say, ah, oh, then it opens up the whole field. And then you start to realize that, oh shit, there's a whole like field of of data compression and all and everything that goes into this into that just one frame, yeah. right? Um, or you could look at it as, you know, psychology, right? And then, oh shit, here's this whole field of like psychology that relates to da, 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 right? And all of it builds onto what you do. So it's like, you're almost starting at the end and then you turn around and you look back and you're like, oh my God, here's all these fields that relate to what I do are directly correlated to what I do, right? Um, explicitly, right? Um, so yeah, there's some, it's super efficient, um, it it is it is yeah it's super efficient it's hyper efficient in some capacities right what limits it is it's it's still language bound right so if you listen to some rap in mandarin and you don't speak mandarin you're not going to know what's going on but what's good is that it still maintains its shape across bound, across like linguistic barriers right. right so there's so much work put into the shape of rap right and how it feels right and how it comes across and how it's metered and like you know when you're listening to a rap 
right? So you can listen to somebody speaking Bengali or somebody speaking Tamil or somebody speaking Tibetan or somebody speaking, you know, I don't know, Tibetan is the name of the language, apologize if it isn't. Um, but you get, you get, you know, somebody speaking Japanese or somebody speaking French Canadian and you know when they're rapping, you know when the rapping has started, right? Because they s slip into a shape which has been very well curated and formalized, right? Um, so even if you can't understand the micros of what they're saying, you get a gist of the feeling, right? And some people who even listen to rap in English, who understand it in English, they don't know what the fuck is happening. They're not, they don't understand the micros. It's like, sure, yeah. But they hear the shape and they feel the shape, right? I'm pretty sure I'm in that camp, yeah. Maybe, you seem like a smart guy. <laughs> Um, but no, so it has that. So even, even what it lacks in, I mean, and that's even, even that kind of constraint, it still has a certain correction for, because it's able to maintain its shape. So it doesn't get completely dissolved. Right. Um, which is great. Cause in that capacity, it's a, it's a really, really great container, right? A really, really distinct container and kind of a, not only is it a, a form of kind of data compression, that it's also a a standard, you know. It also sits up there as as a. Uh, uh, it's USB, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody got USB, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, and we all agree that this is rap. Every you J Japan, you agree? Like yeah, yeah, with this, that's rap. And China agree? Yeah. Australia, every, Africa, we all agree. Yeah, that's rap. Okay, cool. Yeah. So uh, here's USB, everybody. You know. Yeah. Um, or here's JPEG, everybody. Like, here's this standard. You know when you see it, that's just what it is. Yeah, standard you know? data format. So it's a format and a function. Right. You know? Do you think it would be possible to have something that you'd identify as rap? This might be a stupid question. Probably is. Is there a way to have rap that doesn't have language involved in it? Uh, I'm not sure if that means no speaking or if it means no sound, I'm not sure. But is there something that you would identify as rap that there's no kind of vocal component to it? Yeah, I mean, we've ran experiments. We've tried, you know, there's things. Uh, you you have to kind of go through the, through semi so semiotics is what gives us validity. And what's semiotics? So semiotics is the study of signs and symbols to, to dumb it all the way down. Shout out to the semioticians out there who like, <laughs> whose, whose head just exploded. Like, no, you son of a bitch. <laughs> No! Why is he at MIT? Um, but so just study of signs and symbols to keep it real basic, super basic. But one of the key lessons of semiotics, even if, and that, that's where you get a, a um, uh, what's the, oh, I can't even remember this. I, I feel so bad. I didn't expect to be talking about semiotics today. Um, this way you get you get you get sign and symbol and index indexicality um, I, I I icon uh, you get you get these 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 what's the oh my god I'm gonna die <laughs> they're gonna kill me but but anyway the 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 grand lesson that for me that comes out of semiotics is oh you get the signifier and the signified right so that kind of language is born out of semiotics right. Um, there's semiotics kind of pushes you to look at the world as text, right? And if you start to look at the world as text, then everything becomes a communication, right? So buildings, trees, they're all just signs and symbols of something, right? A tree is, is just a sign that there's water right there. Because if there was no water, there would be no trees. Kind of a thing, right? Um, cactuses are like, there's a little bit of water. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a little bit of water over here, right? Uh, there's intermittent water here, right? But don't get it confused. This place will flash flood overnight and then be back to desert in the morning. So be, be, be wary of this. So it's really, if you, and then buildings, you know, are another, here's, here's a textual example, right? Here's, here's a building, what's this, oh, there, that means that there's civilization, there's people there, right? There's some, there's some commerce taking place, there's 
you know, versus no skyscrapers, right, of any note. And it's like, well, what's going on here? Maybe it's just residential, right? Um, so maybe there is not a lot of business going on here. So I wouldn't expect there to be all these other things that come with business. And then maybe all these other things that come with residentiality, right? So it's just looking at the world as text and a message, reading the world like a book, right? Once so everything's telling you something. Everything is, everything's communicating something to you, right? And in the way that we talk about having a conversation. So like I'm having a conversation with you in a particular English language, sure. right? But even if we weren't talking and we just communicated through gestures, it may not be the most resolute of things, like the resolution will be really, really low. It'll be a lot of loss, right? Very lossy. Is that what the that's right? Very yeah. Lossy? yeah. And it would just be like, <laughs> see, yeah. just gesturally, we can't help but communicate. Yeah. How we read it and translate it is still founded on some type of grammar, some type of syntax. But to to Noam Chomsky's point, shout out to MIT, yeah. it's generative baby. You feel me? Um, so yes, you can. I can look at if I choose to say I'm going to look at world as text. What type of text? I'm gonna look at it as a sonnet. I'm a frame. I'm gonna filter it through a through a sonnet. I, I like to put netic on the ick on the ends of things to make it sound like fancy. I'm gonna look at it through a sonetic frame, right? Or I'm gonna look at it through a rap frame, right? I'm gonna look at this as a rap. And so this building is this metaphor, and this building is that metaphor, and then the building is this metaphor. It's a very, it's not as flowy, right? It's not as continuous as a rap, you know, but there's very blocky rap. It's very kind of like hard, blocky rap. Um, but yeah. Do you have any, is, that, is this something that you're going to work more on in the future? Yeah, it's in the, it'll be in the course for sure. Um, you know, what, what it almost feels like, like karate, like a karate master was like fight without fighting, like some Bruce Lee shit, right? It was like write a rap without writing it, yeah. you know, or take these objects and write a rap. So the, clo the, the, the closest, the closest parallel, which is actually really successful is writing raps with emojis, all emojis. And the hard part isn't because they're emotion. They're just, you know, here's these symbols of, of emotion, you know, which is what words are. They're just symbols to represent emotions, instructions, right? The, the issue is textually is like making it flow. And then, but you can solve that with meter. So it's like, here's the timing points. Here's the punctuation. Stop here. Like really respect, but you have to respect the punctuation. Like that's a comma. I need you to pause. For like two seconds and then I need you to pick back up right so it's really temporal issues but in terms of like telling a story with without using words yeah is the idea there that you see a smiley face and literally like think to yourself happy or do you just let yourself feel like oh that's a smiley like, like I feel happy and just kind of um it's, it's you gotta you gotta create these compounds so to speak um Like very simply, you could do like take smiley face, and then you could find the emoji for somebody eating, and then you could put the smiley face and the eating emoji next to each other. And then what? What do you think that is? Uh, I'm think rap. I want you to think. I to think very very rap. I just think of it like you know like I I, I can't escape like the sports of just like you're eating. Like, you know, like foot like football, like running back. Like he's eating. He's eating. Like Ezekiel Elliott. Like you're eating. You're doing good. Like you're killing it. But you gotta put the smiley emoji in it. It's a compound. Smile and what was the next one? Eating? So you got Or just food. You got the eating emoji. Whatever emoji would be like um, like that yeah. represents eating something, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And then you put the smiley emoji to keep your what what you brought into it, you keep the smile emoji there. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then let's let's 
put another element to it before the eating emoji. Let's get the eye emoji. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. So we got eye, eye emoji, eating emoji, smile emoji. <laughs> so it's like for on a rapper point of like purely reference self referencing rap, it'll be eight smile. Which is like eight mile. Which is like Eminem. Yeah. Right? And then I put the eye because it's like I eight smile. Then it's like, okay, we got that. Okay, what can I do? Now that I have that, yeah. I got this Eminem reference. I got this, you know, I'm successfully deploying and like subverting the emoji. I've literally combined them. So I eight smile, yeah. eight smile. You can silence that S a little bit, but it's still there because it's kind of funny. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, now let's build. Yeah. And that becomes like the trick. It takes some, don't get me wrong, it takes some time and it's going to take some permutation. It's going to take a little bit of, you know, and maybe even some post kind of exposition to, to really sort out some of the bullshit that you just pulled. Because it's it's pure bullshit. Don't, don't, <laughs> I don't want you to think that it ain't. It's definitely identifying and stretching. But can it be done? Yes. And can I make it rhyme? Yes. Because I need to find, if eight smile is that piece, I need to find the emojis that would get me to a rhyme that would be ape, pile, right? I'm on my eight. I'm on my eight mile shit, right? So I put the shit emoji. Yeah. At the at the end of the the, the smile emoji. So I then we gotta find am or I'm. So what's that? I'm mm, mm. Yeah, you got that mm. So I could do the mm with that emoji. The mm, yeah. that one. So yeah. I'm I'm on. I could do on, but there's the on yeah. emoji for the for the for the yeah. light switch. So I'm on. Uh, we got my. So we got find. Well, I'm on that. You could do, you could do a hat emoji, but then we got to figure out something that's a T without using the letter T. Yeah. So it could be, I'm on hat. I'm on mine. I'm on. I'm on the. I'm on that. I'm on that eight mile shit. I'm on hat eight mile shit. And then maybe just solve, we gotta, now we gotta solve for T. So it's, it's, I'm solving for X, right? Damn. It's just, it's just crazy to watch you just cause like, like your fluidity is turned up so high relative to what I'm at most of the time. And I'm like reasonably, like reasonably capable dude, but it's just not the way I can think about things 95% of the time. But like, it's just amazing how like that, factor on you is just like all right like that hat the like you just run through it and i think you were running through like box boxing ox oxid oxygen it's just like it's just really have you always been i don't know if this is the way that all rappers are or if it's just the way that you are because you're so grandmaster level but have you always been able to do what you just did or did it take is this the product of decades and decades of practice mm. Like what the hell, man? Like you really, that's not normal. At least I don't think that's normal. Maybe it is normal and I'm just stupid. There's people that are better than me at it, which is scary. Really? Yeah, there's 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 guys that'll do that shit in moments. Not minutes, moments. That I even though I just kind of did it in a moment, yeah. it'll be like but then some of them are liars too, because they'll they'll already have they did it before. They'll do it before they'll and they'll come in just like, uh, let me think. Uh <laughs> yeah. then they spit this. Yeah, and then it, wham. Yeah. It's like you're a liar. <laughs> um but I mean, I've always had a, I always told stories, you know, and I always told them on the fly. Yeah. And I remember being a kid, they were lies, they're complete lies just to kind of fit in, right? Like, yeah, I was watching TV last night and they had this thing with this Manus on there and that Manus, he went and he ripped off the thing. And I may have seen something about a Manus, but it wasn't that deep. It was like to like every day when I came to school, I needed, to, I needed a new set of lies to tell to make myself fit in, right? And that was my comp compensating for whatever, right? Because I hated school. So I've always had that part of like, I need to come up with a story real quick. And I remember being on the, on, on the school bus and my friends were like, yo, tell it, like, tell me a story. You know, and it's kind of like, ah, okay, let me make up some shit real quick. And it would go. 
and I don't remember how good the stories were or whatever, but it was like, here's the story. Well, it was always about hyperbole. Like, here's some fantastic thing that happened. But the killer of it was that my life outside of school was bananas. Like, my dad was an engineer. He was a, a, a Green Beret. He was a martial arts master. He had all these toys and games and gadgets and all this other stuff. An instrumentalist. He used to have bag. We used to come home. My dad would play the bagpipes and shit. Right? And then my mom was like a, a, a seamstress and was a sewer and 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 kept this collection of like National Geographics and books and all that shit. So I would be seeing like the world in the ghetto. I would be seeing like the world through all these books and then the like uh, stuff through my dad would introduce us to, literally introduce us to all these like Asian Eastern cultures and all of the stuff that goes in there. Um, and so I would go to school, right? Preloaded with all of this wild shit, right? Then nobody would believe that a five-year-old or a, t- or a six-year-old, even my teachers, they would they couldn't believe that that's what was happening at home. You know, that I would go home and have like a bazooka at home, right? Like a real- And that's like, not a lie. Not a lie. Like my dad, Army Navy surplus store, had like dummy rounds from like mortars or like, you know, defunct RPGs, you know? And I'm like, yeah, you got an RPG. We got a bazooka. Just imagine you as a kid going to school. I'm like, yeah, we got a, I got a bazooka. No. Kids were like, get the fuck yeah. out of here. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, yo, my dad was a, my dad was Superman. And I'm like, yo, my dad was Superman. And they'll be like, no, he's not. Like, yeah, he is. I just seen him reach into a boiling pot of water and pull a rock out with his bare fucking hands. Like, no way. So even though I was telling little lies, the truth was would be just as ridiculous, you know, at that age. So anyway, to answer the question, I always I always told stories. So and I had some of those stories I had to make up on the fly. Yeah. Right. And so I don't know if I was getting trained into kind of thinking a little bit quicker and a little bit of I had to kind of think a little bit faster ahead of what was going on. I know how it's happening now. I don't know what's happening kind of cognitively or these theories of what that what that is, flow state and all these other kind of things. And then the different parts of the brain that are actually, you know, basically turning off and turning on, you know, how your kind of like executive functions relax. So your your memory can just go fucking wild. And it's like, hey, everybody, stop. Stop. Make a rap about that. But then I also know how to be like, ah, da, 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 noise, noise. Right, you're just letting it rip. And then recursion becomes like, you only learn so many words. There's only so much grammar inside of you. You're not like this fucking endless supply of words, my God. So it's like at a certain point, even if you go wild, it's still going to form some type of semantic sense or it's going to sit on some type of syntactical frame that's going to make this make sense when I kick back in. Gotcha. Right? So both of them are there happening, you know. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, a little bit. I can get into a little bit of a... Um, What's that movie? Beautiful Mind Mode. Oh yeah. yeah. Without without the schizophrenia, you know, or maybe with the schizophrenia. I don't know, but definitely not with the hallucinations. But I can I can dip into that very quickly, right? And just kind of riff on an idea and just walking around the house for thirty minutes, just like. Or his is rap, you know. Do you have, is there anything that helps you get into this state? Like coffee, alcohol, drugs, like anything like that? Or is it just omnipresent with you? No, I never took any drugs. Um, Don't drink. Um, I, I think it's, I think it speaks to the richness of someone's upbringing. Right. Um, the richness of my upbringing was my dad being an engineer was all this just kind of latent tech, like latent technicality around, you know. Um, and, you know, my mom, you had all this just kind of latent intellectualism just sitting around. Right. It wasn't active. Right. But it, it was there. I mean, we had collection. I used to read the encyclopedia because it was there. If I didn't have an encyclopedia there, I wouldn't have read the encyclopedia, you know. 
I'm listening to, I remember actively listening to Bach and Beethoven and like jazz and all of that, that stuff. Oh, it's brain food for children, right? But then I was like, but I know this music already because it's in all my cartoons, hmm. right? It's the score for all my cartoons. So it's like, oh, okay, this, all right. Cool. So you're already primed, but then it becomes, okay, after you have that priming, that latent stuff, when, when does it become active? How do you activate it? Who activates it? Are you going through? A, are you leaving home and going to a school system that's activating that stuff, or is it suppressing it, or is it? I mean, is it actively suppressing it to one degree, or is it just kind of like preparing you for things where that stuff is quote unquote irrelevant, irrelevant, right? So you know, mo majority of our school systems, no matter where we were, it could you could be in a hood, you could be in a you know in the suburbs, whatever, they were preparing you for a certain level of industry, a certain level of behavioral kind of industry wasn't necessarily preparing you to be a theoretical physicist physicist that's in the greatest schools in the greatest parts of town to the worst schools in the worst parts of town it was very specific kind of goals for you what what kind of complicated those goals was you know your parent you know your parents or your social structure your you know the expectations of where you were right and who you knew to have a certain thing right um and it, or attenuated it in, in a certain direction or, or another. So for me, I think back to my base, and the, the pool that was there when I think back as a child was National Geographic. You know, it was manuals about, you know, electronics and it was physical objects that were foreign that probably only existed in the in the entire town that my dad lived in. I'm pretty sure he was the only one with a set of bagpipes, right? And if he wasn't, he was definitely probably the only person with a set of bagpipes and a sitar, and tablas, and a djembe, and a scimitar, and you know, like weapons. Yeah. And he made me a bomb vest for Halloween one day, and I was like. I shouldn't wear that to school, you know? <laughs> like, maybe this is a bad idea. Like, you know, he's a weapon specialist in the military, so that's why. Not just saying, you know, that was that thing. So he would make the wildest costumes. And then one of the costumes he made was like, he's this mad bomber. And I was like, <laughs> nah, nah. Um, so when I think back and I pull from things to talk about, yeah, that's the that's what I know, you know? And I'm sure other folks who who had a who, who whose dad was probably a physicist and her mom was probably a physicist and you know they're gonna know math when they think back to their childhood and I'm like okay when I go to MIT or if I go to Caltech or whatever you know they're like man this guy is just like dick how how do you think like that and he's like my math my my home was full of math books you know both my parents are physicists and mathematicians this is this is it's not how I'm doing it. This is this is all I know, right? Yeah, and I, I think that's what I am. I think I have a myriad of my background is myriad. My dad was a polymath, and you know when I think back to my roots, I, I just what I remember is like all this wild, extra, interconnected diversity of shit, you know. And so when I come when I come to rap or I come to spaces like this, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. And the things I don't know, I'm like, oh, oh, another sitar. Let me go, play, you know, let me go play with that, you know, or bag, oh, bag, but bagpipes in the form of epitaxy. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, you know, because yeah. yeah, I'm used to having foreign objects and foreign ideas around to jump into. Do you have any advice for younger people who might not have, you know, the parent who's a physicist and the one parent physicist, one parent's a mathematician? It certainly wasn't my case. There's a lot of cases that are worse than my case. Mm -hmm. Advice for people who maybe, you know, would get around to watching this and they say, damn, I want to be like Lupe. I don't have the right environment don't for it. Don't be like Lupe. <laughs> oh, be no? Be better than Lupe. I want to be better than Lupe. Yeah. Um, advice for him. Obviously, there's a wide spectrum of people here, but. Yeah. I mean, you, you have to first re, re, that's the word I'm looking for. I was going to say reorganize, but that's, that's a smarter word than that. Uh, reassess your constraints and that think about it from 
how you can use your constraint versus how your constraint limits you. Because limiting isn't a problem, right? Limitations are actually good, right? If you can master what that limitation is limiting, limiting you to, right? So if all it gives you is oranges, you say, oh, I could just, all I have to do is make this orange juice. Life gave me lemons, all I can make is this lemonade. You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, maybe if it gave you a whole lot of them, maybe you can like distill some type of acid out of that shit, right? That can be used as some type of drill to like drill a hole into the next room using nothing but acid. Maybe you can make an acid drill out of that shit, right? Or maybe there's something about the materiality of the rinds to a certain degree that you can maybe, I don't know, you know, I really don't know, but it's like, maybe you can make a bulletproof vest out of them shit. It's like, I don't know weaponizing things, but it's like, maybe there's something deeper than just making juice, right? And it may seem like all I do is just make juice, right? But maybe there's something, something else that you can do, you know, with that constraint and be imaginative and inventive about it, especially if that's all they fucking giving you. You know, if all they're giving you is ghetto, you know, then it's like, okay, how can I master the ghetto, right? And how can I like use it as this laboratory for all these different ideas, right? And physical things and stuff like that, right? And it's like, well, what is that gonna do? It's like, I don't know, maybe I'll jump really, really fucking high Right from all I had was jumping over fences because the swings didn't work, or maybe because the swing there were no swings and all we had was the bars. Maybe I could become a gymnast, you know, at a higher level because now I can use the thing as a fucking, you know, like vault or a balance beam, or whatever. Fuck it, parallel bars, or whatever. And I'm I'm riffing. I apologize, but that idea of like here's your constraint, master your constraint. There's nothing wrong with that. Master that shit like the back of your hand, right? I guarantee you that there's just as much information and useful data in your constraint than it is in the unconstrained. And that what's going to happen is you're going to look and you're going to come into the space and you're going to realize that all this shit is just constraints. Right? All this, all it may be a constraint with a fancy title, like, I don't know, epitaxy, but at the end of the day, you're just growing shit. Yeah. Right? That's it. Just growing shit in a certain thing with a certain, you, know, you need to balance this and balance that. You're just cooking. Right. If you're not a cook, then I mean you could be a chemist because that's all cooking is is chemistry. Now let's put a different title on that. Yeah. Let's not call it cooking anymore. Let's call it chemistry. And instead of giving you ramen noodles, right? I'm gonna give you these kind of proteins, or I'm gonna give you this type of, you know, acid, or I'm gonna give you this type of base, or I'm gonna give you this this other thing to kind of mix. And then don't just set it for three minutes. I need you to set it for 0.35 seconds with such and such. And then I'm gonna give you, here's just a microwave, but now I'm gonna give you this real high pressure environment to do it in. And then how does that change things, stuff like that. So I think if you master your basic constraints and, and master those kind of fundamental limits um, and you recognize that everything else is just another set of limitations, which is bigger, fancier names on it, that you'll, you'll be able to adapt and, and excel and progress right, into any field, right? I think mastery of one field, and if you understand mastery, you can apply that understanding of mastery to another field. You're not gonna be a master of that field yet, but you know what it takes to become a master of that field. So you know where to start. You know what's the bullshit, you know what's not, because you can always refer back to your mastery. But if all you've done your whole life is just sit in your constraint and just let your constraint constrain you and not pull anything from it or learn anything from it, then there's nothing then there's nothing to inform when you move around or you get put in a different position, right? Even in your own position, you're, you, you can't excel, right? You can't move around because you've never mastered your your own kind of constraint and it could be a self it could be a constraint that you put on yourself even if you're like oh, i just hate myself like master hating yourself you know what i'm saying like master that shit so you can speak to it like deeply like what does it mean like oh you know i'm a self-depressive right and when i get into these certain moods i put myself and think like oh that's what makes me depressed so now i can do it immediately right right i know what that is identify what that is and then it becomes like oh i can control it I can make this happen. Oh, shit. So, you know, that's bad advice. It's terrible advice, especially to use it in that, to, in that frame. 
But I think a lot of people that are going to come in and out of this school, well, I'm assuming a lot of this is for to a degree, you know, there's people that are going to come in here super depressed, masters of depression, right? That are using, hoping that this class is going to solve it or a way to get to hide it, right? Whatever class, right? As to make up for their own personal faults. They think that a degree in physics is going to make them a better person. And they think that, you know, as long as I can do that, then I'm good. And it's like, nope. You have to master being a person. You have to master yourself. You have to have a deep, honest understanding of yourself. That's what mastery is, a deep, honest understanding of that. Even if it's the honesty is, I don't know what the fuck I am. Be a master of ignorance then, right? Like be complete about all the things you don't know about yourself and write it down. Say, yeah, I don't know this about what I'm not doing. And it gives you at least a pathway, at least a proof to show your psychiatrist to be like, these are the things I don't know about myself. Yeah. And they're like, okay, cool. <laughs> hey, we'll, work on- <laughs> we'll work on these yeah. things like step by step. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think it's that, man. Not to be too, cl- to be too cl- cliche about it. I think it is no matter where you are in the world, there's data, information, potential. There's And there's limits. And then if you think that I'm going to get rich and that's going to solve my problems, it doesn't. Right? I'm going to get a degree and it's going to solve my problems. It won't. I'm going to get a job and it's going to solve my It's not. Right? You're just going to have problems with a job. You know, you're going to be rich with problems. You have a degree with problems. You know? So... If you're going to solve, if the whole goal is to learn how to solve things, like become a master physicist, solving the most complex problems in the world, because the most complex problem in the world is the human condition. Human happiness, humans, humans, hu- being able to sit within yourself and be comfortable, self-contained, self-propelled, get adding value to the world by you understanding the value in yourself. I think that your points are good i certainly feel targeted by what you said you know in a good way in a helpful way and i got involved in the physics phd thing because it wasn't clear what to do but it was like all right this is a hard thing to do and at least you know you get a phd in something and now you understand the whole pipeline up to a phd and yeah now you can go to a different field if you need to um a corollary off that is society recognizes you as a master in physics well technically like a doctor in physics if you have a phd in the, th- the path to being an expert in physics is very clear or biochemistry um how are rap how do you like obviously you're a master or grandmaster at rap i would say that a lot of people would say that but how do you know like how how is it known that you like what makes a master rapper compared to because you, you can you can have rappers that have millions of views on youtube but it's shitty songs. You're like, oh, what? why the fuck is this up here? Like, are you kidding me? My song has 50,000 views and this has 10 million? Like, what's, what's going on there? Uh, I mean, they, they're a master of their audience, right? Somebody has a mastery of audience participation and somebody doesn't, right? So there's that kind of trade off, right? Where did you focus your skill sets on? You know, I focus my skill sets on getting a lot of people to come to my concerts. That's what one person might say. I, I, I focus my skill set on getting a lot of people to watch my videos on YouTube, right? Not necessarily bending words and coming up with emoji raps. You know, good luck with that, Lupe. You know, um, I mean, I think there's a certain peer-to-peer thing that is probably very primal in other um, fields. Um, man, rap is still just forty years old, right? You think of something like physics, which is when we start in 400, 500 years old, you know, astronomy even deeper, right? And I think in some of those primal stages, it might have just been peer to peer, you know, like Galileo said, What's up? You're like, oh man, tell him, <laughs> tell him I said, What's up? You feel me? You know, um, probably a little bit more, definitely more institutionalized than that, but just giving the example, right? You had the people in the field doing the stuff, giving each other their kudos referencing each other's work and that was it you know and then you go get burned at the stake 
kind of and all your work gets burned right kind of thing because it's heretical um or questions the nature of god and you're like what no um so i think some of it i think where it, it was at a certain point is that peer-to-peer -peer understanding that you have skill and you have skill above and beyond the mass right and some of it is like you we the people who got on the train early got to focus on all of the primary functional stuff and got a mastery of that. And then they became the influence point for everybody beyond a certain point. And then that's one kind of piece. Like you influenced a whole chain of things. You might have just did one or two things, right? But those one or two, two pivotal moments became foundational principles for everything after that, right? Yeah. Um, and then people tacked on, but they always cited you. So there's a, there's a, there, we do have a deep history of citation in rap, in reference. Um, and you can go back to, oh, such and such did that first, mm -hmm. or such and such did that second, or such and such did it more refined, or he, were, he, he built upon that theory and, and kind of made it a little bit more robust. Um, so we have that, very similar. Um, from an awards side, like a Nobel Prize type thing, we we still don't have that. Um, we still rely on pre-existing institutions to provide us with little spinoffs of theirs, right? Versus having our own kind of self, kind of generated piece. Um, but I think that's coming. It's just finding out what to prize. Whereas Nobel Prize is very, I mean, it's not necessarily very specific, but it's like economics, right? And then there's some things like, did you move a certain needle in economics to a certain degree? And I think that's coming. And I think it will be, you'll be surprised who gets it, right? Because it'll be like, it'll feel just like legacy play for the famous person, right? Whereas Nobel Prize, nobody knows who none of the motherfuckers are, right? Like, unless you're in that field, you have no idea who this yeah, dude is, right? For sure. And rap, it'll be different, but it, and it should be different because the dudes who did it the best in rap are the most famous, right? They're known for doing that in a public space. So it may come across as like, oh, you're just giving awards to the dudes with the names. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like, that dude or that woman was, like, influential to this degree and you can map her his or her kind of influence chain through this whole generation of folks right and that's why she got or he got you know the thing um now it's still it's still just kind of like i mean pick your poison like who's the best rapper it could you say who sold the most records and it's like well drake is the best rapper um Who's the most influential rapper? And you say, man, Lil Wayne had a generation of folks rapping like Lil Wayne. You know, or Eminem, ooh, he has a, to this day, right? Has a bunch of folks rapping like Eminem. So maybe it's Eminem, right? And can that be built upon? Can it be topped? It's like, it takes years to figure out, right? Is there enough time in the in interest to maintain that? And is there enough survey, valid survey, to show in in academia, all of all academia, I mean, there's a number of citations because work has to be cited, yeah. and it's like, yeah, we got thirty thousand citations on this paper. That paper is the M and M of papers, right? Um, we don't have that system to that degree, um, only because the demand isn't there. The USB, I mentioned it kind of haphazardly. But I wish we had USB. Hopefully the the idea that we, hopefully out of this, out of this next few block of years, as rap get, becomes more integrated into academia, we get to pick up the valid, like very, I want to say validly. <laughs> validly. Um, you know, you have to cite your work. You know? You, you have to, like, we created a, a standards body that says that if you want to put out a rap album and you want it to be officially recognized for this prize, then it needs to have 
this underwritten. It needs to have this stamp. And the only way you're going to get that stamp is it needs to have this, it needs to have that. The same demands that go on to, you know, uh, a PhD or, you know, wanting to get that particular thing. So really, really just to keep track of where the influence goes, right? So that when we do award that prize or that grant or whatever that may be, we can show like you've done the work. You went to this conference, you did this, you did that, you did this tour, you did that, you did this, you did that, you did this. You weren't just sitting at the crib and you got 10 million views on YouTube. Yeah. But it's like, did you actually go put in the work? Can you track the work? And not just from an economic standpoint and financials, because I'm sure some of those Nobel Prize dudes, the most money they've ever seen in their lives and will ever see in their lives is from the, the, the Nobel Prize money, right? Yeah. But some of them, right? And I'll bet some of them are probably still broke right and they're still like i need a grant and a nobel prize just helps him like but okay give him some money he won a prize you know and same thing in rap you know there's guys that are broke the guys that are super rich there's guys that are really rich that are really really good there's guys that are really rich that are really really whack and there's folks that are really really broke that are really really whack and there's people that are you know broke that are really and there's people that just work regular nine to fives that toe the line so i think if we can if we can have a jpeg if at, at, at the very least, generate a JPEG or a USB or some type of standards, you know, uh, underwriter laboratories or whatever, just to be like, and this is what that detail, this society sets out the, the terms for this. And it's a, a society that's highly respected and, you know, et cetera. I think we'll get to a, a good point where we can definitively start to, you know, say like, hey. And does rap need this more so than other genres of music? specifically because rap has this um, evolution mechanism that we talked about where it's you're really you know riffing and biting from a lot of other influences mm. is that kind of where this comes from like why wouldn't you need this for all types of music um i mean i think you could have it for all types of, i think i think it's, it's it's a little it's a little it's a little different for other kinds of music excuse me um because I think they have it already, right? I think like, you know, jazz has jazz conservatories. Point to me the hip hop conservatory. Where is it? MIT, soon. You know, maybe, right? There, there isn't one, right? Um, there is no, but what jazz had to do and the cost that it had to pay to get that is also something where it's like, mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that kind of rappers, like they want that freedom. You know, it's freedom is directly tied to what it is, that RNA factor, right? Whereas jazz at a certain point became about standards. Can you play these standards? If you told every rapper that they had to learn this set of verses you know, and perform them as if they were their own, even though we sample and pull, it's still, there's still a, a, ta a big taboo on like, oh, you just rap such and such as verses. Yeah, you can do it in homage, but I mean, like, no, you went and made an album of covers. Rap is like, fuck <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's what's required to have rock and roll hall of fame. You know, to have, I think, you know, uh, jazz conservatory or you know jazz at lincoln center or you know jazz fest or what like these these recurring institutions um that are all about the promotion and promulgation of jazz and it's not necessarily about expanding the scope of jazz it's about con it's a conservatory conserving and preserving jazz in a very specific specific period of time with a very specific set of ancestors that are very specifically and even if you are this new, hot, young trumpet player coming out of Berkeley, crushing it, you ain't getting it out of, you You probably won't survive out of Berkeley unless you know these standards, right? Because your gig entails you that when you go to perform at this whatever, they're going to want you to play standards. And you can riff on a standard, you can improvise, but it's you're coming back to take the A train, Right? And if you can't get in there and take play take the A train, then it's like, my man, no, no, right? So that's that's the thing that I think rap will never solve. Yeah. But I don't think that's rap's problem either. You know, I don't think it's to try and become jazz. Right. It's a feature, not a bug. 
I think it's like, let's become what we are and let's just take how do those frameworks of a conservatory, of a JPEG, of a Nobel Prize committee, of an of an IOC, right? Of a I of a you know uh, Institute of Advanced Studies, of an MIT. What does that framework fit? And then how do we permutate it and deal with it? But we're going to have to pay for some things. There are definitely going to be some costs to it to get that type of formality. Kind and of creative costs, you mean? Not not money. Creative costs, money, monetarily costs for sure. Money costs like you gotta you gotta somebody's gotta put. 50 million dollars into a campus you know somebody has to do it It has to happen right and then you know i think the payoff is the longevity you know institution of physics way back in 15 whatever right created a space where physics is going to be here for the next thousand years and this doesn't exist for rap yet because rap is so young. Is that right? Rap is rap is so young, but I mean we're on the we're on the we're we're it's Moore's law. Like we don't need that much. We don't need to have a big history to do things that create longevity, right? Or that substantiate us two hundred years into the future. Like we we know what the lessons are. People have done it, right? So you can point back to the institutions and the societies that still exist, right? And say we need that. What did they do? Okay, cool. We need that, yeah. right? Is it just an underwriting service, and then it's just a kind of be wild, but be wild within certain, be able to do these certain particular constraints, which don't impinge upon your creative functions, but do them because we need them. We need you to fucking do this, please, right? Because we need that as reference to like yeah. go make this make sense and create a library and an archive and all this other stuff. So what's happening? Harvard Harvard has their hip hop archive. Um. One of the goals here is um, my tenure here. I don't have tenure, ladies and gentlemen, but yeah. my time here. Um, so to, to have some of that, like, where's MIT's archive? You know, yeah. where's let's where's MIT records? Where is it? It's right here on my hat. God damn it. Uh, did you, you know? get that made? <laughs> yes. Okay, beautiful. At the mall. At Lids. Shout to Lids. <laughs> Need to sponsor this uh, podcast. No sponsors currently, so that'd be great. Yeah, but it's it's you know, and you know, long story short, yeah. Institutional longevity. Yeah. You know, and is it from an actual institution, a building, or is it a you know, is it just a more professionalized function within rap that requires a certain level of commitment to a set of standards with the goal of promoting and extending and expanding but having a return point so it just so it doesn't become too diluted i think i have an answer for this so forgive me for asking it because it's kind of a it's not a great question i mean it, it kind of is but they don't know um they might see this and be like why the fuck did that kid ask that like, what a fucking idiot um probably happens anyways but um <laughs> Talking about setting up, you know, institute, conservatory, longevity, this kind of stuff. What do you say to someone who says, why do you need to do this? Like rap is something that happens, you know, on the street and kids do it in parking lots and, and, and uh, at recess or whatever. Like that's where rap lives. And then we get some great songs out of it. And, and you know, we don't need any of this stuff. What do you say to people who might right. say that? Uh, what, what field are they asking from? Um, just like a, just like a average schmo. Average schmo? Yeah. Or can we professionalize schmo a little bit? Um. Give him a field? Yeah, I don't know. Someone, uh, I don't know. Does it, does it matter, I guess? It, it does matter. I would say, I right? would say, okay, I guess a rapper probably wouldn't. Well, I guess maybe a rapper would say this. I don't so know. a rapper talking to another rapper? Rapper, yes. Let's say rapper saying, dude, what the hell? Like, you don't need to go to MIT and be a fucking nerd. Like, let it live where it lives. What right. do you say to that? So... I've had that conversation. Okay. Uh, I've had, I have. So I, I have had it. Um, it, be, it becomes this. It's like, why would you want to formalize it? Yeah. That's what they're asking you. I mean, and I feel that's the nature of, 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 of a little bit of the nature of your question. Not completely, but a little bit of it. Like, why do you need to go to MIT to learn how to rap? Sure. Yeah. Right. And I would, I would, you know, and, res and my rebuttal would be like, where'd you learn how to rap? You know, and they'll say, man, I learned from the streets. 
but in these streets rapping and you know it's like okay have you ever made any money doing it no majority is no so let's take that one rapper represents the majority the majority won't and they never will no matter what they do they're gonna lose money doing it um like are you famous i'm like no no one no one knows who i am walking around the campus right they're like what the <laughs> fuck is that they have no idea right so even me like yeah no do you get rec- have you gotten recognized around yeah. here oh yeah okay but not but not as much as as if you know bad bunny was on campus and it's turmoil right <laughs> it's not like that at all okay just a series of questions yeah are you this are you that are you that most of them are gonna be no right and my re- rebuttal would be well if you already know if you're already not doing none of that shit here you might as well go do none of that shit at mit too right so even if it's the lowest hanging fruit of complete failure or complete non-impact in the in your own field right in rap then we might as well tack all of it we might as well be everywhere felon right that's one base very basal vulgar response right the other response is we think that we learned all this on the fly and in the wild but we didn't right we is very f- the people who formalized it around us who make the most money from it who receive the most financial gain and who also receive the most power from it you're operating they allowed you to live in jurassic park you think it's wild you think we're all dinosaurs and competing and t-rexes and ah, but you go t- you go just a little bit past that bush of palm trees or whatever it is, and it's a goddamn fence, right? And people are with viewing boxes, right? And this whole thing has been controlled the entire time, right? And even in that frame of control, let's master, again, back to my point about mastering your constraints. Let's master all the constraints. Let's master it. Let's, let's you know, like... We, th- we think that it's wild. It's actually really formal. The people who have formed it are, get the most out of it. The dinosaurs don't get paid at Jurassic Park. They don't even get fed. They get fed the other dinosaurs. Right? It's not a zoo. So it's like, and I'm, even though Jurassic Park isn't real, but that, that, that concept speaks the most to it. You think it's very, very wild, very, very loose, but it's actually very formed. So why don't we control the farm? Right? Why not? Why not have an ownership of how we form this thing if it's formed already right um and that was my that was some of my response to in real life where it was like you know but actually it wasn't it was i'm lying now but it it, i wish it was it was less sophisticated than that (laughs) but now it's like yeah why don't we own the farm too in all its ways right so you have people who have record companies right artists who run record companies you have artists who have clothing lines and artists who have you know, sponsorship deals and artists who have gym shoes and artists who have this. You don't have any artists that make microphones. That doesn't exist. Why not? Right? You don't have, you don't, they'll, you have artists that are sponsored by companies that make, micro, that make microphones, but you know, and they're like, well, let us deal with the microphones. It's like, why? Because you have other competitors. There's tons of other people who make microphones. They didn't say, let you deal with the microphones. They went and made their own, specific to their craft. Right, specific to a very specific audience who make harmonica microphones, right? And the microphones that were just coming out the the box from the major manufacturers, they were like, this doesn't, we have a very specific way that we do the blues and we need a very specific microphone to do that. And so we're gonna build them ourselves, right? Where's rap doing that, right? Where's, where's does rap own a factory? No. Right, because we never we we always think of rap as just an ephemeral product versus it it actually having hard, substantive, you know, things that can, because we don't think of it as a phenol that can present itself as a phenotype outside of itself into something physical. It's just this ephemeral practice, right? But it's like no, like my man, like rap is that bottle, 
rap, the world is text. Rap is that champagne. Have your own champagne company if you're going to drink other people's champagne. Jay-Z did that, right? Right? Own your own. So, and not just own the bottle of champagne. Let's, can we invest in the vineyard? Because I want to pick the grapes. Right? And I want to understand the distillation process all the way through. And the fermentation process. Apologize, right? So, uh, loosely speaking, apologize. It's something about whoever comes up with a critique, their critique is going to be just as invalid right, as your critique of their space, right, a negative critique, because you can say the same shit about physics, I can say the same, the same shit that people say about rap, I can say about physics, and, and, and neuroscience, and all these other frames, right, there's going to be a certain level of applicable, like, appreciative, applicable things that are happening in that space, and then there's a bunch of other shit that can't nobody use, but people just made up for themselves to have fun with, right? Uh, uh, there's a, uh, a, neuro, a neuroscientist here who teaches a course, and she was she was talking. It's a, it's a it's on an open courseware, and she was just talking about how you know some of her colleagues they get really detailed about the specific neuron firing and the, the, you know, and she has respect for that because of her colleagues. And she's like, and it does this and this one firing and the, 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 right? Yeah. And she's like, but whatever with that shit, basically. Like, <laughs> what does it do in a macro? Yeah. Right? How, do, how can you use that in real life? You know? And yeah, maybe there is something to that. But in my case, no, I'm, I'm more focused on how those things express in mass, right? Zones versus very, very, very minuscule components, right? Um, and then I'm sure there's a range on the other side of the spectrum where somebody will critique her in the same way. Like, well, I don't need to know how my brain works. I talk. I open my mouth and things come out. You know, I can't even access it if I wanted to. Right? And we don't even know what, if, we don't even know, we know how it works, but we don't know if I eat 10 ounces of macaroni and cheese and then four ounces of broccoli and then two ounces of water that that's going to cause my prefrontal cortex to 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 have a certain response versus if I ate nine ounces of macaroni and cheese, like just they don't yeah. like maybe the guy with the neurons is trying to figure that out, like what does nine ounces of macaroni and cheese do to my you know my prefrontal cortex? But right now it's like nah, man, like I eat macaroni and cheese and I get, I fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. But like, I I just think it's levels to critique. I think it's levels of validity, and I think everybody has a certain level of validity, and I think everybody also has a certain level of invalidity right like they're non-valid when they step outside of their space to neg negatively critique other fields for the same shit that's going on in their field right rappers who rap that'll never make a dollar it's like well why are you doing that they say because i love it shut the fuck up you know what i'm saying like i'm done here when none of us talk about physics a physicist man why are you doing that shit you can't ain't nothing to, what you gonna do it's like man i just love the way i just love being in the lab dog let us laugh, man. You go fuck yourself. You feel it? Then you're done, right? Computer scientist, man, what you, you building a video game? Like, no, I'm not. Like, am I going to be able to use that? Like, no. It only works on this one computer? Like, yeah, it only works on this one computer. You can't even, I can't even pull this shit off of this computer. Like, why the fuck are you doing that? Because I love it. Yep. Makes me feel good. It gives me purpose. That's right? why I said this is a stupid question because that was already my answer to it. And I think that you had known that, but... um. It was good to hear from you. Um, dude, I made it through like one of the three pages. Um, Damn. I, 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 could, I could burn so much of your time. but No, I know we could do, let let's do, a, let's do a part two. Because this is the beginning of, this is the beginning of me here at MIT. I'm still learning, still a baby, right? I think it's interesting to kind of double back maybe later. I would love that. And then like see how things have changed. Maybe some updates. Maybe I maybe I would have gotten kicked out by then. Maybe you would have gotten kicked, kicked out, out by out then. Out. You know, we never yeah. know. I'm supposed to. I think me and you, you know, graduate in the loose sense at the same time. So I'm. I it should. We'll check back on this in a few months. I should be out of here by next June. Yeah. So I think right around the same time. Same so I think lines. let's let's let's. This is a thing. Yeah. Then let's see how things change over the year. I think it'll be great. So this time, this you you've. It's the pause, a comma, 
you know what I'm saying? Two seconds. Mm -hmm. What one last idea for you, kind of? Do you know what a four year transform is? Do I know what a four year four year transform? A you, four year transform. I have yeah. no idea what that is. No worries. I think there's a computer file video of it, but it's a, it's the same idea of. Um, and I'll just say it on piano because that's what I know. It, like if you play a chord like D F B flat, you just play it, and the people that have perfect pitch can be like, oh, like D F B flat, like perfect. And but it's just it's just one bite. It's just it's three separate waves collapsed and given to you. Mm. And that's kind of how I felt. Like I want to say so many, I think n not adjectives, but so many words to you of like thank you for coming out. It's been like inspiring. It's been like like invigorating it's been like really intellectual like all like there's so many words i want to send to you for coming on but i don't have i don't have five minutes to just word blab at you so, so. you're gonna hit me with the dfb flat there you go dfb flat oh and it speaks to our semiotic piece so maybe we end on that yeah all right thank you so much <laughs> thank you brother appreciate it all right